Hi, everybody. Welcome to Atlanta. Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds. Daryl Waltrip will join us shortly. Larry, I know you've got a book this thick, thicker than the phone book in Atlanta, of crew chief notes for this place. How many of them still fit? They're not worth a whole lot this morning. You know, we've been talking all year long with all the changes, with the reduction of rear spoiler, the change in the tire. The crew chiefs were able to throw away their notes from the past and just work off this year. But because of what's going on here this weekend, you can almost throw the notes away from Friday because these cars have not been on the racetrack since Friday, and the weather is 20 to 30 degrees warmer. This racetrack is so slick. Th these guys, it's a chess match from the get-go. Saturday was a welcome day off for some of the teams. They were able to go home back to the Charlotte area and enjoy a day off or in some cases a day at the shop. So a lot of unknowns as we come to the fastest track in NASCAR and we go trackside. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for those most famous words in motorsports, please welcome our special guest from the United States Special Operations Command. have fired we're set to go racing for round four of the nascar nextel cup series we'll show you our starting lineup across the crawl at the bottom of the screen and get some pit updates beginning with matt yokum mike darlington raceway maybe 285 miles away from the atlanta motor speedway but pulling a number of crew chiefs today they say that same tire wearing out characteristic we always see at darlington is what they're expecting to see today here at atlanta in fact tommy baldwin known in the modifies for always taking on two tires there'll be four tires today on every stop in fact they've got 10 sets of tires already mounted lugs glued in the nine pit casey kane a third and a fifth here last year they are expecting hoping for better things today to steve burns well thank you matt jeff gordon man he's made his very first nextel cup star here in atlanta in 1992 today will be his 26th he has four wins and as much experience as gordon has and together with crew chief robbie loomis they really don't know what kind of a race car they have as larry mcreynolds says there's a lot of unknowns they haven't been on the racetrack since friday there's been a truck race friday night a bush race yesterday a lot of rubber on the track robbie loomis said when the green flag falls it's going to be a lot like a happy hour session to see what they have to the editor of speedway illustrated dick bergren well tony stewart has to go down as a favorite to win this afternoon in the last seven races here he has led almost 25 percent of the laps won one of those races ran the bush race yesterday finished second learned a lot as a new car he's been fast in practice and this i spoke with him moments ago he predicted a very fast slick racetrack just like he likes them to genie zelasco well joe nemechek led a race high 63 laps in california before his engine failed and then it was a pit road miscue that caused his third place car at that time to fall out of contention the o1 team says they have paid the past two weeks because they have been knocking out the door joe nemechek feels this will be their weekend. He likes the car a lot, and he likes the track. He has two top tens in his past five races here. Mike? Thanks, Jeannie. The threat of rain from the weekend has dissipated. Going to be a nice sunny day, about 68 degrees to go racing here in Atlanta. 43 drivers are ready. 100-some thousand fans are ready, so let's go. The Department of Defense has a new website where you can support America's troops. Read messages from service personnel, learn to send your own messages or care packages, and find ways to volunteer or make donations that go to support our fighting forces. Find out more by visiting americasupportsyou.mil. Tuesday, the next Cell Cup standings took a turn. Jimmy Johnson left Vegas with the lead. The penalty dropped into second behind Kurt Busch. Kevin Harvick fell from 8th to 10th in the standings. There's your top 10, including yesterday's winner, the rookie Carl Edwards. Now here's the danger zone. Drivers 35th and above after five races are exempted from having to qualify for the show. But look at the Joe Gibbs cars, one of the Evernham cars, and the Wood Brothers presently on the outside looking in. Now, Larry said earlier the teams were off yesterday, and many of them had a chance to go home. But uh, the place wasn't empty of Nextel Cup regulars, Darrell. No, there were nine, nine of the top ten finishers in the Bush uh, race yesterday are in the field today. I am so excited about that if I'm a driver. I got to run that race yesterday under very similar conditions. And you know what else I'm excited about? 
I remembered to take off my clear shield and put my tinted <laughs> shield back on for the sunshine today. But the drivers were not the only one working yesterday. Even though the Nextel Cup garage was closed, I saw a lot of Nextel Cup crew chiefs that had no affiliation with Bush teams walking up and down pit road. And I think the biggest thing all of us learned, especially watching that Bush race, when that man waves that yellow flag, you better get you four more Goodyear tires. <laughs> Well, anytime you run at a racetrack faster than the speed at which jet planes take off, aerodynamics is key. Here's Chris and Jeff at our Ford Cutaway car. Yeah, thanks, Mike. We're just uh, down below the Hollywood Hotel. And Jeff's got the little rotisserie thing uh, working. Right, guys go into the corners at 199 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. The aerodynamics, paramount. Why is it so important to have a perfect fender? Well, Chris, what you're doing with this fender is you're putting pressure on the front end. That's what helps grip the front tires. And anytime you run into somebody, run into something that damages these fenders, lock this fender in, and all of a sudden, you lose that grip on that tire. As Jeff Burton explained to me, you go down that corner 190 miles an hour, turn the wheel, and the car wants to go straight. And that's not a good thing. All right, steel with a little bondo. So what could a driver or the crew do if there is something wrong with the fender and the driver can get into the pits? Well, until you get an opportunity to get in the pits, he's going to have to hunt around, look and find a way to enter the corner to make the best of that bad situation. If that means rolling out of the throttle early, you'll just have to do that until you get a chance to go to pit road. Hopefully those guys can make a little bit of adjustment on it. Not to make NASCAR mad, Ed. you got to kind of keep the car <laughs> shaped up like they've told you to, but you want to get that fender back as, as good a shape as possible so this car will go around the racetrack, get the front grip you want, and give you an opportunity to win this race. You are Mr. Fix-It. So at this racetrack today, no such thing as a minor fender vendor. Mike? One to go when they come to the line here. Let's have a look at today's weather. It's going to get up to about 68 degrees. And I think the biggest thing we were talking a while ago is the fact, look at the track temperature. We were very cloudy and overcast on Friday, but look at there now, over 100 degrees, and it's the middle of the day. It's going to continue to go up. It just makes these cars slide around more and more, more chassis adjustments needed. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of tire wear, particularly right rear tire wear. So uh, that slipping and sliding is going to make it even worse. Here's our NASCAR on Fox ride along program. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Casey Kane, Jason Leffler, uh, Michael Waltrip, Kevin Harvick, Jeff Burton, Kyle Petty, and Dale Jarrett all carrying our NASCAR on Fox onboard cameras. Two cars to the rear Mike Wallace for an engine change, and Kyle Busch, who crashed in qualifying, went immediately to a backup car. So they'll start in the back. Watching that reminds me of it. Did you see that? I think everybody will be able to see that because we've got plenty of cameras. <laughs> you see right there, 500 miles, like DW was talking, hard on these engines. Pit road speed, we've been seeing that be a factor every single week, 45 miles per hour. The fuel window, 55 to 60 laps. But trust me, after about lap 15, that driver will say, we get a caution, I need some tires. Oh, yesterday they fell back through the field like flies, man. I mean, once you did, if you didn't take tires, you went to the rear. Look at this joint. I love it, man. It's like being in a big old stadium, like it's a great feeling, great atmosphere here. DW, let me tell you about a good feeling. Next time we come around over 190 miles per hour, reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time. Get up on your feet in the suite. Here we come. Buggity, buggity, buggity. Let's go racing, boys. I don't think Bobby Jr. heard me. 32 car didn't get a very good start. Trouble back straight away. Car around. Sog. That was Bobby Labonte's second week in a row. A lot of cars around. Jeff That's a Gordon, huge the 24, wreck. Matt Kenseth in the 17. Remember, this They're is still wrecking. Bobby Labonte early in the race at Las Vegas. They're still wrecking back there. Kurt Busch, our points leader in the 97 car. And just like yesterday, we don't get through the first lap here. That started off a turn two, and I tell you what happened. Bobby Jr. got up on the outside there, and uh, I can't remember. I can't tell you who had to lift. But that's what bottlenecked these guys up. It's Kyle Petty in the uh, 45 car. Came into Atlanta, 16th in points. And look at Jeff Gordon. At a track where aerodynamics is so important. Oh, and a really tough break for Shane Meal, who had a superb qualifying run. And it has gone for naught. Steve? Right before the green flag, Mike Joy, Bobby Hamilton Jr. was concerned that he had a flat left rear tire. A 
flat left rear tire. That may have been the culprit here. He does, uh, Steve. We can see it on the monitor. And uh, he was up on the outside over there, and he and someone got together off of two, and that's what started that. Casey Mears, there's Bobby Labonte. And remember, Mike, you showed in the beginning in the points, Bobby Labonte's not even in the top 35 right now. Well, it was Casey Mears that got loose first. I think, those, I think that really started a little further up with those guys reacting to what they saw. For Bobby Labonte, though, who has won here six times in that Joe Gibbs number 18, it is a second straight week of frustration. Scott Riggs may have got in the back of he Casey He got into Harris. the back of Casey Kane and turned him right there, and here they go. But again, I believe, some, I believe Casey may have lifted because of what happened in front of him. Jeff Gordon doesn't make really, really hard contact. All he does make contact. Dave Blaney squeaked through. There's Matt Kenseth, 17. Travis Quaffle got it twice. And there, Labonte comes to a halt right in front of Jeff Burton. 97 car, minor damage, I would think. You're riding with Jeff Burton. Burlow, got a spin in front of you. Get down low if you can. Easy, easy. A lot of smoke, can't help you a lot. Easy through here, easy through, easy through. Got him piled up in front of you. Easy means easy. Caution is out on lap one for a multi-car pileup exiting turn two. Cars that have come to pit road after that pileup include Casey Mears, Robbie Gordon, Kurt Busch, Matt Kenseth, Bobby Hamilton Jr., and Jeff Burton. Jeff Gordon's taken his car to the garage. Yeah, they're a... Uh... The 32 car had he was clear and clean of all this. It happened back there like we saw with uh, Scott Riggs and Casey Mears. It looked like Casey Mears in the 41 car was loose off the corner and then it slung up back around overcorrected and then of course they started stacking up behind him. Dick Bergman with Jeff Gordon and we've got a, a mini monitor back here and Jeff is most interested in seeing what happened. Take a look. Tell us what happened. Uh, well, I mean, it's hard to tell from there. Looks like there was some contact uh, with the 41 and, and a couple other guys, and, and then he got, uh, you know, turned sideways. And once that happened, they just it just caused a big wreck. And I thought I was going to get get through there. I uh, saw smoke, but then uh, they all turned down in front of me. So, uh, unfortunately, a, a, a short day for the DuPont Chevrolet and a lot of other guys. Uh, I'd like to see a few more angles and go back a little bit further, see kind of how it all started. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what, what went on there, but, um, you know, we're going to fix it as best we can, get back out there, and uh, it's not going to be a, a fun day, it's, but it's going to be a long one for us. How bad is that car? I mean, uh, you know, mainly just body damage, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll fix I'm, I think we'll actually have a pretty decent car when we get back out there. Problem is red flag right now, can't work on it, and, and by the time we do get back out there, we're going to be so many laps down, doesn't matter how good we get it. Uh, I guess we'll just be racing the guys that, that also have damage. Yeah, the nose of the car is pretty well pushed in, both the right front, the left front, and the grill. And uh, to complicate, Dick, NASCAR has a minimum speed that each car must maintain in order to be able to stay out on the racetrack and not be a hazard to competition. So some of these wounded cars are going to have to get pretty well fixed up to be able to go back out on track. Fireworks at the start here at Atlanta Motor Speedway on Fox. Uh, I'll show you another look at this. Coming See if you off turn two, lap one. And watch you watch this car. W watch right here, these two cars, 25 and the 10. Now, they make contact. Watch the smoke fly. And that's why he got his left rear tire cut down right there, Bobby Jr. Now, back behind them, I'm not sure if drivers reacted to seeing the smoke or if the spotter said something, but that's what created this mess behind them. I'm not sure that the two are related, but they, they more than likely are. Now, we looked at multiple angles and cannot confirm whether there was contact between Scott Riggs in the white number 10 and the green 41 of Casey Mears. Because when we see the 41 here, he's already sideways, and uh, Riggs is obviously going past. And we definitely know everything behind that was a chain reaction. See so what we got on this look. We got a lot of looks. You got to realize something. They're doing 185, 90 miles an hour right at that point. And just like we heard Jeff Burton spotter, Jeff Burton's way back here. 
Spotter was saying, easy, easy, easy. They're wrecking in front of him. Look at Rusty right there. Rusty went right through the middle of that. And here's Burton making contact here after being told to take it easy. Bobby Labonte, he got, I don't know how many times he got hit. And Dick Bergeron is with the sixth time Atlanta winner. Yeah, and three times he finished second and had hoped to turn around a tough season here at Atlanta. What happened out there? Uh, you know, uh, well, I say I don't know. I, I know I kind of watched a little bit of it on TV there, and, you know, a couple guys already got into two guys. Two cars got into two other cars off of turn two. You know, uh, 500 miles. That's all I can say. It's 500 miles, not, not one lap. Boy, can you tell the disappointment? Wow. Matty? The engines have fired on the cars that are sitting on the front stretch. Meanwhile, the 97 team waiting for NASCAR to say the red flag has been lifted. The red flag now lifted has been an advantage for this team. It gave Jimmy Finnick, Mike Kelly, and the boys a chance to look at the damage on the championship leader's car. One big issue they have, there's a broken fender brace in the left front corner. Besides the cosmetic damage, they've already beaten out a lot of the sheet metal, but they're going to have to fix that fender brace. Jeff Hammond showed you the importance of fenders, especially here. Now, that fender brace will hold that fender up in place as that car dives down to the corner, and they are going to have to fix that on the 97 car of Kurt Busch. Steve? Matt, problems for 2003 Nextel Cup champ Matt Ketseth. He has steering problems. Basically, your, his car is out of line. They're trying to get it squared up right now. Crew Chief Robbie Riser talking to the team. A lot of damage on the 17 car. He's on pit road. The teams had yesterday off, and all of these teams are working double overtime today after a lap one crash. I don't want to say that qualifying on Friday night, not getting back into race car till Sunday is a, is a problem, but it's part of it. Let's join Chris in uh, for a visa race break. Thanks at the Ford Cutaway car below the Hollywood Hotel uh, with Jeff Hammond. Four uh, former points champions involved in that nine car wreck. Jeff, why don't you illustrate to us a little bit uh, some of the things that Matt and Steve were explaining. Crews are working on cars with damage. We'll start with, I guess, Kurt Busch's car. Well, we're talking about right now trying to get these fender braces straight back up. You can see this is the inner structure work that helps support the nose and builds out where the fenders are mounted. When all this is damaged, it changes the shape of the nose. So they're going to go back in there with a hammer, try to beat it back out. Hopefully, it's reinforced enough to where again, they can make that arrow work across the 97 car. Other guys that they're going to be working with, if you'll take a look inside, you'll look. Here is the tie rod ends. A lot of times you get hit real hard in the front end, it will bend a tie rod. It will bend a lower control arm. It can bend also an upper control arm. So these teams will be taking a look in these areas and making the necessary repairs where they make the adjustment with the tie rods or having to replace the parts. They've got to get these cars where they'll drive straight at these kind of speeds and give the driver an opportunity to finish the race. Bobby Labonte, very upset, made the point of emphasis 500-mile race. When you're repairing a car after lap one here, what goes into it knowing that this is that long a race? Number one, you've got to get it right the first time. NASCAR has now come down with a new rule. If your car cannot make minimum speed, they'll make you go in the garage, and you won't be allowed to come back out. So getting it uh, done right the first time, make sure it's safe and can maintain that speed is so important. This has been a, a Visa race break from the Ford Cutaway car. Let's check in with Dick Berger. Dick? Well, this wreck was no respecter of either veterans or rookies. You have heard from a couple of the veterans already. Travis Quaffle, a rookie here in the Cup Series. Wow, that car is really torn up. What happened? Well, as best I could tell, the 41 car got loose off of turn two, and basically everybody just kind of checked up and, and, and got up into it. I was going to try and go below it, and uh, somebody got in my left rear, and well, this got wadded up. I hate it for the Kodak guys. We had a really good race car. It's a brand new car. They worked really hard on it. It was fast, and uh, I was going to try and have a good run for Brian Desana today. Uh, little guy's sick, so uh, hopefully. Hopefully I didn't ruin his day. Uh, I just hope he, he enjoys the race, and uh, we'll go get him next week for everybody. All right, this one has been front and back, big time. Let's go back to the top of the show and the danger zone. These are car owner points. Exempted from qualifying are the top 35. Here is Bobby Labonte, two weeks in a row, out of the race early, and after five races, they begin using this year's car owner points to determine who has to qualify and who doesn't. So that team is in a deep hole right now. Yeah, you gotta be within 400 points of the leader. I've only run four races, and we're, he's already almost 400 points out of touch. To make the chase for the cup at the, the end chase. of 26 races. Right. A brief red flag period, five laps complete, officially all under caution. Follow a little bit up on what Jeff said. 
you've got a long way to go. I mean, the race just started, so you've got to fix the car right now. So if you have any chance at all of making up laps or staying out there and running fast, do it now. Got a long way to go. And that red flag was welcome for those teams that basically had to repair their car because it was a, they were able to formulate a game plan without being able to work on it. We talked about Rusty Wallace there, the two car just barely getting through. Looked like he maybe had a little bit of damage. And Jimmy Finning, crew chief for Kurt Busch, the 97, they have their car repaired and they're back out there and they are still on the lead lap. There are 10 cars under repair from this accident and already four of them have gone laps down. Pace cars in, we go back to green to begin lap six. Single file restart, Ryan Newman out front. Let's try this again. But for how long? Here comes Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson in the 48. You look back there, Carl Edwards in that green and white number 99. This, these two cars were the class of the field yesterday in that Bush race. I mean, already we're seeing cars run multiple grooves. You see Ryan Newman in the 12 already running the high side. We saw that a lot yesterday in the Bush race as well. Darrell, I think you hit on uh, the big difference. Three of the top four right there, Johnson, Edwards, and Biffle got 300 miles on this track yesterday. They're comfortable. These other guys have got to get up to speed. I mean, you know, they've been, it's been, like I said, it's been since Friday that they were on the racetrack. And throw in the mix, the man running fifth, Casey Kane. He ran that race as well yesterday. I guess we keep talking, everybody will have a bush car next week. <laughs> Dick Bergeron with a disappointed rookie. Well, yeah, Shane Mealis had a tough weekend. Pit problems on Friday night in the truck series. Yesterday a crash, today a crash. This thing is really torn up. How hard you hit? I hit pretty good. It was one of those deals you're not expecting to hit and couldn't see for all the smoke and somebody ran into me in the back and I turned his head on into the wall. So it's unfortunate we uh, launched wind fuel yesterday, which is a great multivitamin by Goins Technology, same maker of trim spot. And, uh, it, it's disappointing to get it started off like this, but uh, we've got a great crew and uh, we're going to run this car, the 08 Winfield Chevy at Bristol, and uh, we'll be back next week with a 32 Winfield Chevrolet at uh, Nashville. Street clothes mean he's all done for today, Mike. Thanks, Dick. Of the top seven drivers, only two, Ryan Newman, our pole sitter, and Joe Nemechek, currently sixth, did not compete in yesterday's Aaron's 312 that we saw on FX. And Joe is usually one of the guys that runs all the, or most of the Bush races. And look at Greg Biffle in that 16 car. He was almost below the white line. It looks like right now, Ryan Newman, the 12 car, our pole sitter, car's not exactly like you would want it. You know, Larry, I just don't see how that car can qualify as fast as it does be impounded and not and, and not fall back in the race because you know you you've got to have a special setup to go that fast not necessarily the best race setup either we've seen a good bit of three wide racing off turn number two right there jason left for scott riggs uh, going at it there's jamie mcmurray in the picture with dale jarrett and elliot sadler and riding with the uh, I don't know, somebody. <laughs> I think it was, I'm sorry, I think it was Leffler. We got a lot of cameras out there. You know, coming off of two is a difficult part of this racetrack. Uh, it's a little slick right over there. You hit a little patch that they have in the track over there, uh, a black streak. You can see it occasionally. It's like tar. Every now and then you'll hit that and the car will take off. You've got a lift. Somebody's around you, they always have a chance of running over you. And Darrell, that's really the only, you might say, 90 degree corner. You're carrying so much speed, you just run out of racetrack as you go up on the straightaway. Of the cars involved in the lap one accident, Robbie Gordon and Rusty Wallace running one lap down. Matt Kenseth is seven laps back. And in the garage, Travis Quaffle, Bobby Labonte, Shane Meal, and Jeff Gordon. Well, we keep wondering when Casey Kane is going to break out of the slump that he started this year with and get back to the form he had last year. Right now, I think he'd probably be tickled to death to run second like he did four times last year. He's in fourth place right now. Matt Kenseth in the 17 car. I think he had a tire going down. He's back on pit road right now. He is six laps down, about to go seven. Boy, what, what a miserable day. A track this fast in a car that's not driving right, it will, it will wear you out. Now, in qualifying, we were seeing upwards of 199 entering the corner. Telemetry on Casey Kane showed 194 under race condition. And that's still awfully fast because we're 12 laps into this run, and we know the cars will not run as fast today in race trim as they will in qualifying trim because you have a lot of things open like front end open to cool the radiator and oil cool. See the two different lines here, the 12 car, it gets off a turn four a lot better than the old one because you got a little freer line off of there. The car runs, launches off the corner a lot better than it does if you're on the bottom. Watch the difference in these two cars. 
Oh one can pull up in the corner, but then the 12's got the better line off the corner for speed, gives him good straightaway speed. This is a battle for fifth position right now. Not surprised to see Joe Nemechek in that O-1 run running so good. I know this is a different racetrack from Fontana, but this is the same car where he was so strong about three weeks ago out there before the engine expired. Greg Biffle, Casey Kane, third place going off into turn one. Seeing the same thing with these two guys right here, Casey Kane in the nine. That's where he ran the bush race yesterday, right up against the wall. Greg Biffle right around the bottom. Joe Nemechek carrying Morissette's paint job this week and sponsor. Gets past bull sitter Ryan Newman. That changes fifth place. Jimmy Johnson still leading Carl Edwards by about six tenths of a second. Quaker State aerial coverage of Atlanta Motor Speedway in Hampton. Just about a half hour drive uh, south of Atlanta off I-75. Track that's been here since 1960. Had two different configurations and seen some great racing. Mark Martin moves up on Ryan Newman, who continues uh, to drop back. That is eighth place. Here's Matt. One of the race tracks where this 12 team tested right here in Atlanta felt comfortable coming into today's race, but Ryan says the car is just really tight and getting tighter. Just trying to hold on, settling in by himself, hoping for a caution soon to fix this race car on the road. Well, Matt, that puts a period in what DW has been talking about. I think to run fast around here qualifying, you have to have your car a little bit snug. But you know for the race, you need to free it up. And a lot of cars were loose the other night. That's cars that are running pretty good right now. See Tony Stewart in the 20 car right there. This is going to be a battle when he catches Ryan Newman in the 12. This would be a battle for night. So Ryan is about to fall out of the top 10. But I'm going to tell you, the car, one of our biggest movers, movers is Michael Waltrip in the 15 car. He started back in 37th. He's in 11th working, trying to get in the top 10. Two things. Michael won the Bush race yesterday. He ran in it. And also, his race team is the team that won this race a year ago with Dale Earnhardt Jr. And I talked to Michael this morning. He was very optimistic. Uh, Tony Jr. said, don't worry, dude. We got the right setup in the car. You'll be good in the race. And, you know, looks like he's pretty close. For more, here's Matt. He's got the right setup, and he also has the right race car. This is the same car that Dale Earnhardt Jr. won with here one year ago. Michael hasn't said a lot on the radio. The car really to his liking, and it shows huge, huge climb. Meanwhile, his teammate Dale Earnhardt Jr., much like he was in practice, much like he was not qualifying, loose all the way around this racetrack. Well, if you were watching qualifying and you knew when you got out of that car, that's the car you had to start the race in today, I would have not slept very well for a couple of nights. That thing was evil. Ryan Newman in the 12 just lost two positions to Tony Stewart in the orange 20 and to Michael Walter in the 15. Well, Newman has five straight poles here, but his average finish at this track is 14. Here's Michael going after Tony Stewart. Got him. Ninth place. And you know the most unusual thing about Michael Waltrip, Darrell, we talk about it all the time. We go to a racetrack where you rim ride. You run at the top of the racetrack. Michael Waltrip is the first one, but he's running right around the bottom of the racetrack as he is here in three and four. So you know what that tells me? Maybe it's not Michael because that car last year rode around the bottom here when Dale Jr. drove it. So it has a lot to do with setup. And that's our first singular virtual crew chief question to vote. Text the word crew to 191 on your singular wireless phone. Or go to foxsports.com. You'll be entered for a chance to drive away in your own singular 31 car. Why has DEI struggled? The crew, the crew swap, crew or car swap as you wish, new rules or otherwise. Now, speaking of DEI, we're riding with the other side of the spectrum, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, that's the biggest problem. You hear him telling his crew chief, Pete Rondo, I'm real loose in the corner. And you can go nowhere loose in the corner because it messes the whole corner up. Remember, he started in 35th. He's 29th, but he's only about seven or eight seconds from being lapped by our leader, Jimmy Johnson. And he's not the only one in dire straits. Rusty Wallace, only about five and a half seconds from going a lap down to the leaders. I think Rusty got taken by surprise. Looked like they came on pit road and didn't realize they had as much damage to the left side of the car as he actually had. NASCAR's 
brightest new star Carl Edwards won here yesterday from the pole did a back flip at the start finish line at the finish is he on a roll Steve he sure is Mike and he's got an important family tie in this sport his father and next L Cup veteran Kenny Schrader are cousins when Carl was 16 he moved from Missouri to Concord North Carolina to work as a volunteer in Kenny Schrader's shop Carl told me this morning it was an entire month before Schrader sat him down and said son what is it that you want to do here he said well Schrader I'm I'm here to drive your ARCA car Schrader said you absolutely are not you're going to go back to Missouri you're going to beg somebody to drive a dirt car and that's where you're going to get experience well, Carl said he wasn't very happy about it at the time but that's what he did he went back to Missouri got in a dirt car three years later he had, there was a big race in Moberly Missouri Kenny Schrader was there Danny Lasoski was there. Carl Edwards beat them all. And that was a big turning point in his racing career. He gives Kenny Schrader a lot of credit. Jeannie? Well, Joe Nemechek came into 2005 telling everyone he really had to curb his enthusiasm because he was so excited about the season. We talked about it in pre-race, some of the mishaps that have happened. In football terms, Joe said we have had flashes of a great offense but have had too many turnovers. We squandered a couple of great opportunities, but this is a resilient team, and we are going to bounce back. Right now he's bouncing around a little bit, a little too tight from the middle of the turns off. Can't wait for the pit stop to make the adjustments. Matt? Halfway through this run, the last time by, that's what Tommy Baldwin told his driver, Casey Kane. Casey said, what was my lap time the last time by? I changed up my line down in three and four and one and two just to see if it would help. Tommy told him the time. He says, all right, I'll try something else. The car, a little on the tight side, but Tommy says, that's a lot better than being loose. Another fellow who usually runs well here at Atlanta, in fact, almost won a race here at Atlanta, uh, is Dave Blaney. In, uh, yeah, I mean, he seems to be carrying the Richard Childress banner because he started back in 27th, and now he's in the top 10 in that 07 car in 10th. But how about the car right behind him? Kurt Bushton, the 97 car, our current champion. He restarted this race back on lap five, back in 35th position, and he's up to 11th. This team right here is one of the reasons I keep getting on my high horse saying, if NASCAR is not a team sport, there's never been a team sport. Remember, during that red flag, he was on pit road with the left front completely torn up. Remember what this team did in those final 10 races, repairing fenders and, and responding to problems this team had. There he is knocking on the door of the top 10. 10 finishes in the last 11 races last year. Uh, but Dick Berger, and how about uh, Dave Blaney in that snap on Chevy? Yeah, he's having a pretty decent day, Mike, but he called to his crew and told them on the radio that the car is tight everywhere. And I, I certainly think that, yeah, Bush is going by him right now, but I certainly think that he must love this place because back in March 01, he led 70 laps, looked as if he was going to win the race before a hub failed and he had to go to the pitch. To Matt. Dick, Atlanta was the only race in the chase last fall. The 97 team did not score a top 10 finish. They feel like they have caught a huge break. Kurt said the toe was fine, the steering wheel was straight. They made the changes to that left front corner, putting a piece of aluminum right below the headlight area to try to piece together the broken sheet metal there at the seams. And right now, he says the car, very good. You can see him hugging the bottom, trying to chase down the 15 of Michael Waltrip. That'll be for ninth place. Meanwhile, the leader is in heavy traffic, Jimmy Johnson. Uh, has just lapped a couple cars and now he's coming up on Rusty Wallace. Yeah, and he's got to keep pushing it because he's got Carl Edwards breathing down his back bumper there. So he's got to keep going. He can't take too much time or get by these guys. Now those three cars, Mike and Rusty Wallace, uh, were running with Jimmy Spencer side by side a lap ago. So fortunately for the leaders, they've gone single file. But as Jimmy Johnson has to pick his way through, Carl Edwards ready to pounce. Carl Edwards, the 99 car, his car is so strong exactly where his Bush car was. Watch him turn it to the bottom, almost on the white line, and right there he's able to pick that throttle up and drive off the corner, all the way around the bottom. I don't believe any driver has ever won the Bush and the Cup race at Atlanta on the same weekend. Yet. We listened in on Carl Edwards. Carl not saying much. <laughs> take the three on the throttle. Needs to be addressed. If we're going to take air out. I think I can go fast. 
If it's much freer on the throttle, it's what I'm saying. So what that means is, is when he's got the wheels turned to the left and he's backing the gas, the front end's not digging quite enough for him. He'd like to get that front end down in the racetrack a little bit more. But what they have to be careful, they don't want to get him loose. We've been seeing how cars that are loose are going backwards. 38 laps complete in the Golden Corral 500. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Take a look, you can participate in our next poll for a chance to drive away at your own 31 car. The results asking about, and most of you spoke and said it was the crew a problem with Dale Earnhardt Jr., who currently is running 28th and trying to avoid going a lap down. He came in 27th in points. He stands there currently at the moment. Not looking too good for those guys right now. They need, really need a caution to try to work on that race car so they can get it adjusted where maybe he can get up there and get up through the ranks and dig himself out of this uh, hole he's found himself in right now. The leader, the first lead change, last week's winner, Jimmy Johnson, keeping his streak alive in every race this season, uh, having a lead. Johnson getting past pole sitter Ryan ne Newman, who led the first five laps. Right now we got... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sitting right here... He's That's uh, <laughs> Joe Nemechek's son. It looks like John, John Hunter right there. He's keeping a uh, close watch on his dad, timing him. Few, uh, future, uh, future crew chief, we should say, for the U.S. Army. I wonder with Jimmy Johnson again. Uh, Chad Kanaus, his crew chief, is here in the fifth while he is appealing that uh, two-race suspension. Yes, he can be here while they're going through appeal. Uh, but after Tuesday, uh, there'll be uh, some decisions made by the uh, uh, committee that will review everything, and uh, we'll have a pretty a better understanding whether or not they're going to justice uh, uh, ruling or not. Every second look right there is Chad right there sitting on top of the pit box just like he was yesterday. He was part of the Bush race also watching his driver uh, lead this race right now. Looks like the car is still working really well and uh, as Jimmy pointed out at the beginning of the day, they would love to be able to go ahead and win this race, go through the post-race inspection and be able to say, look guys, see we won the race. We didn't have to have anything go wrong. It was a mechanical problem. All right, Mike, uh, Joy, what happened to the uh, 20 car? That's a good question. As his teammate Bobby Labonte returns to the track after lap one crash damage, Tony Stewart is falling through this field uh, like a rock. His last lap, 32.90. That's eight-tenths of a second slower than the leaders, and he's lost about seven positions over the last three or four laps. Something's wrong with 97 over here in turn four. He's coming to pit road. It's wobbling a little bit like it may have a flat tire. Matt. That's exactly what he's saying on the radio. Right front, possibly down on the 97. Dodged a huge bullet with that crash at the opening of the race, making his way back up through the field to the top 10. The Sharpie guy's on the wall, waiting for him to pull to a stop. Scott Rago, the Jackman, dives around the right side. They pull off, you can see the tire is cut down, the inner liner held up. As they come around and hit the lugs on the left side, we told you earlier, this was the only place in the chase that he did not score a top 10 finish last year, and he's away. It almost looked like he had made contact with someone with that right front tire as he came down pit road. It had the Goodyear rubbed off of it. Well, we've got great cameras and replays producers who found us this. Let's see. This is Joe Nemechek. He's caught. He was battling Joe for fifth, fifth position. Fifth place. Oh, he didn't make any contact with anything. He just lost it right the tire right there. It was awfully lucky where that happened and he didn't get up in trouble. But let me tell you where his luck may be with him as well. Is we're only about eight to ten laps from that scheduled green flag pick stop. What they really want, they need this thing so bad, is to run through the course of green flag stops. And you know what? The way he was going with those four fresh tires, he probably will be leading this race. Well, you know what? I looked up in the dictionary, lucky, and it said Kurt Bush. We talk about comers and goers, Daryl, and at this place, a great example is Tony Stewart. He fell like a stone. Well, he's ratcheted himself back up. He's back up in the top 20, and he's now, now his lap times are only three-tenths off of the leader. So, Dick, what was wrong, if anything? Well, quite a bit has been wrong. Early, early on in the race, Mike, he said that the car was tight on entry but was good off. Then later, at about lap 41, about 10 laps ago, he said the more the car goes, the more the back end gives up. The tail end, loose for Tony Stewart. That's his problem. Starting to see some of those green flag stop start. Here's Bill Elliott in the 91 car, and I talked to a lot of the Dodge teams this morning. They felt like they were getting the worst of the fuel mileage of most of the cars. This is a scheduled four-tire stop, Steve. 
And Larry Mack, Bill Elliott, Austin Bill from Dawsonville, saying his car is very, very tight. They're going to make a track bar adjustment two rounds up on that 91 car. Chris Andrews, the crew chief on that automobile. Four tires and a track bar adjustment. Mike Wallace is in. Jeff Green and Jason Leffler have also already uh, made their green flag stops. Leffler was in about 10 laps ago, a little bit early for the length of this run. There's the uh, Morgan McClure car, the Lucas Oil machine for Mike Wallace. And he comes back out. Michael Waltrip has passed Joe Nemechek, moves him up into the top half dozen. Car looks like it's pretty good. Michaels does on the long run, and uh, that's what you want here today. Because I don't see any uh, indication of any more caution flags. Things are pretty clean and lean right now. I mean, looking at the back of Michael Walter 15 car, you can see how much he could pick that throttle up and stay in it as he pulled away from those cars behind him, and he's pretty much still around the bottom of the racetrack. Matt? Mike, the big issue for Michael Walter, Tony Uri Jr. Scoochie told me, he has to back off earlier than normal where he would back off his point where he would get out of the throttle on entry into the corner because the car is so loose. But he is great from the center up off the corner. And you can see that on the video. Thanks, Matt. Pit stops. Jamie McMurray is in. Greg Biffle is in and Casey Kane. Dick? Well, Biffle is in and his pit stop had been planned for about five or six laps. They knew right when they wanted to bring him in. Biffle with a very good race car today. No major changes. He had been running in third position prior to this pit stop. Never won here in the Cup Series, but he does have one push race. The match. And the nine of Casey Kane and six of Mark Martin on pit road. Look for a chassis adjustment for Kane. A little on the tight side. You can see the wrench going in the back window for Kane. Krushek and Odell hit the lux on the left side as Mark Martin is in. Mark, car was pretty good. He said just a little on the loose side as the nine is away. Mark Martin, service also complete. Mayfield, Nemechek, Sadler, Elliott Sadler, along with Scott Riggs now on pit road and the 50 of Jimmy Spencer, Jeannie. Looking at the 01 of Joe Nemechek, he had a vibration in the car, guys. We decided, you know, he's gonna wait a couple laps, but I might as well come in Get this taken care of, getting the fuel, getting the four tires. They're going to free this car up just a little bit and anxiously awaiting the arrival of the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. Dick? Tony Stewart in his pit area. They have pulled the rubber out of the right rear. That hopefully will cure his chassis problems. Jody Forsett hit by a tire last week is on duty. To Steve. Carl Edwards in the 99 said he was losing grip, especially when he got on the throttle. They'll put on four tires. They have dropped the air pressures on the left side for Carl Edwards. Long stop, having trouble getting it full. Matt. No grip on the racetrack for the 12 of Ryan Newman. They made a wedge adjustment and tried to fix that tightness with an air pressure adjustment for Ryan Newman. Big weekend for owner Roger Penske. Yesterday, he scored his 250th win as a car owner in auto racing when this Penske IRL cars finished one, two. Elio Castro Nevis finished second, and Sam Hornish took home the victory at Phoenix. Michael Walter, guys, up on the wall, waiting for the 15 car to come to a stop. He hits the signboard. You can see they're gonna make a chassis adjustment, wedge and track bar. Track bar already complete, wedge already complete. Michael, loose on entry, a solid stop so far, and he is down and away. It'll be easier to give you the drivers who have not stopped. They are Jimmy Johnson, Dave Blaney, Dale Jarrett and Ricky Rudd, Casey Mears, Kevin Harvick, Brian Vickers, and Sterling Marlin and Mike Bliss. So yep. Bliss is in, Marlin's in, here comes Johnson. My big question, this is the first green flag stop we've been seeing at every race. Will these guys dodge the pit road speeding penalty that we've been seeing time and time again? Jeannie and Jimmy Johnson's been. Well, we have been talking all day about the cup drivers involved in the Bush races, and that includes Jimmy Johnson, the big thing he took out. Get fresh tires, new tires, stickers, whenever you can, whenever it's possible, and that's what he will get. Four tires, fuel, car's been running pretty good, just a little bit snug, so let's try to free him up. Rusty Wallace suffered damage on that lap one accident. They actually had to get on pit road and tape the battery to the battery compartment. So, as Daryl said earlier, a lot of damage to the left side of that number two car. One driver who has not stopped is rookie Kyle Busch in a backup car after a qualifying crash. He can't hear his crew on the radio. They asked NASCAR to black flag him and get him in for fuel. 
just remember that's a backup car that they had no track time with after crashing and qualifying the other night. Dale Jarrett, the 88 car, the UPS car, he has inherited the lead. I would anticipate he'll be coming to pit road here pretty quick, though, maybe even this time. Looks like so. Green flag stops. Dave Blaney led a lap. He's now in along with Brian Vickers. And here comes Jarrett, as you predicted. Uh, Ricky Rudd had the chance to lead a lap, but rather than run out of gas, he and the Wood Brothers take service. Oh, boy. Dale Guess Jr. What? Too fast, exiting the pits. A nab by the electronic timing system, and he will get a pass through the pit penalty. I know Dale Jr. is a cool character, but I think some of that frustration of just not running well and, and things not going right, that's what creates situations like that. The driver tries to make up for all the other problems. Can you do this, Larry, without losing a lap? No, I think you will come close to losing another lap. And re remember, he, he does not have to stop in his pit box. But he has to just come down pit road to pass through at 45 miles per hour. But guess who has inherited the lead now that we've cycled through? Greg Biffle in the 16 car. But remember, he was one of the cars that hit pit road the earliest to take advantage of those four fresh tires. Dale Jarrett, too fast, entering pit road. As we told you in Daytona, the old method of timing the cars with stopwatches in segments. The drivers wanted uh, a more accurate system. They have it. Uh, so Jared and Earnhardt have both been gigged for too fast on pit road. It's a drive through penalty at pit road speed. And those are the areas where you make up time under the old system. Getting on pit road and getting off pit road. Those last pit boxes and the first one coming in. You could push the envelope a little bit right there and get away with it. Let's get an update on tire wear. Here's Jeannie. Oh boy, I'm talking about somebody who is pushing the envelope and feeling pretty lucky right now. That would be the 01 of Joe Nemechek. What you're looking at here are the front tires, the right side and the left side, and you can see some serious tire wear. They're feeling, as I said, pretty lucky in this pit right now that they escaped what could potentially have been a problem. As I mentioned, he pitted a little early because of a vibration, and now we know why. We got a battle right here. Now, this will be for the third position. Carl Edwards in the 99, Jimmy Johnson in the 48. But it looks like Carl Edwards will get trapped behind Robbie Gordon in that seven car and Jimmy Johnson to take the position. They work past Kevin LePage. I, I tell you, I think Carl Edwards is all he's trying to do right now is keep Jimmy Johnson in his sights. Uh, after yesterday's race, I think he knows that's the guy he's got to beat. And this is our leader, Greg Biffle in the 16 car, sandwiched between two cars trying to get back on the lead lap. Jason Leffler in the 11 and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 8. And things have gone from bad to worse for the 8's team. On the pace laps, they split the field in half. They use two pace, pace vehicles so that each driver can match up his pit road speed to an engine RPM. Apparently that calculation didn't work in Dale Jarrett's case while serving his penalty pass through. He was too fast. Sixty-seven laps complete at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Greg Biffle in front of Kurt Busch by 3.7 seconds. Rocking and rolling in the record here on Fox. Nice to have you with us from Atlanta. Greg Biffle, your leader. Jimmy Johnson currently second, but has led most of the weight on the first lap. Four former champions involved in the wreck, including Jeff Gordon, who is now back on the track, but it put drivers like Matt Kenseth and Bobby Labonte in trouble. Carl Edwards, who won the Bush race yesterday, currently running fourth. Jeff Hammond having some uh, problems in the pits, and you got to be a kind of a, a circus performer sometimes to get things done when guys pull in there. Well, let's not really call it problems right now, but when you come down pit road, you're not allowed to have seven men over the wall. So when Carl came down, there were a lot of things that needed to be done to the car, and what they wound up doing was really putting a burden on one man to do, do about three jobs. So as he comes off, he comes into his pit, you notice everybody goes to the right side. Well, pay attention, there's the gas man back there, Joe uh, Krasinski, and he pulls the windshield tear off, off makes the chassis adjustment. Then he said, oh, yeah, by the way, I got to finish gas in the car. So he runs back over, he hooks up to finish fuel in the rest of the race car, but the spit stop was just a little bit slow. He had too many things to do, but they got it all completed, and he still running forward. Yeah, see, I, man, that went too great. That's, good. that's all right, Joe. Frustration. I think the other guy should maybe kick in a little help him out. He did the work of five other guys. I'm telling you right now, one man band. Meanwhile, Carl Edwards hanging in there fourth. Greg Biffle, Jimmy Johnson, Kurt Busch currently running third. 
And Jeff Gordon back in the race after being involved in that nine car wreck earlier that involved a number of the headliners. Yeah, he's 72 laps down, but uh, Robbie Loomis and Jeff all realize that you've got to get these valuable points. We've got to go out there and, and just do the best we can. we still got a long ways to go. And uh, I mean, got almost 249 uh, laps more to go. So a lot of things can happen and they realize every point counts right now. All right, like Dale Earnhardt Jr. in front of uh, Sterling Marlin. And, uh, you know, it's worth pointing out, Jimmy Johnson, who has led uh, the most laps so far, currently running second as uh, Greg Biffle. Yeah, he's trying to put a lap right now he's on Sterling Marlin running the 17th. And, you know, he's just on a rail right now. I mean, he's got that number 16 car right down on that line where you want it to be. And he's just motoring through this field. And uh, Jimmy Johnson competing in the same chassis, the car that won the Atlanta race last fall in both races here at Lowe's Motor Speedway last year. We really got a really good battle right there. We see uh, the nine car right in behind uh, Tony Stewart there in the 16, 40 car. I mean, they don't want to roll over and play dead for sure. Casey Kane, the only Dodge in the top 10 running fifth. Let's check in with Matt Yoakum. And Casey Kane running in the fifth position now. Moments ago, Ray Evernham, the car owner, was looking at the tires that came off Casey Kane's car. Now the right side showing considerable wear, but very similar conditions to the tires that came off Michael Waltrip's car as well and a few other teams on my end of Pier Road so we talked at the beginning of the show about tire wear showing a lot of it here at Atlanta and the teams are seeing that now the 97 car of Kurt Busch running third his car is tight again remember he pitted Mike Joy back on lap 51 with a flat right front so Bush third behind his teammate Greg Biffle in front of teammate Carl Edwards with Jimmy Johnson in between. Uh, a final note on that Carl Edwards stop. The gas man, isn't he really, Larry, the only man on the crew that has freedom of movement? Everyone else's movements is dictated by the man next to him or the man he's working with. Who else could run around and do that? Yeah, I mean, the other guys that are there, basically the two tire changers, the Jack and two tire carriers, they have something going on the entire stop. The gas man, you know, he has a little bit of liberty there, but I think what caught him off guard just a little bit, remember, that was a green flag stop. He almost had to dump that entire 22 gallons of fuel in before they let him go. It just seems like real good management to me. He got so many people, got so many things he got to get done, and I like the way they orchestrated that whole deal. For a final word on this, let's uh, go to Steve in Carl's pit. And Mike, that didn't rattle Carl Edwards at all. In fact, he just radio crew chief Bob Osborne and said, the car's real good, still just a little bit tight. And they've been reminding Carl, including spotter Bobby Hudson from the beginning of this race, as he goes by the 97 of Bush, take care of your equipment. We're gonna race hard with 50 to go. Just be patient, reinforcing that virtue to young Carl Edwards, just 25 years old. Well, it was the plan that got him to victory lane yesterday here in Atlanta. I'd like to know what the definition of patience would be to a young guy like Carl Edwards, 25 years old, with all the enthusiasm he has. I'm sure it wouldn't be the same as it would be for someone like me. We just watched Greg Biffle in the 16 car put Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 8 car another lap down. He is now two laps down, and we're not even a third of the way through this race. I'll tell you, another car that's having a good run, needed a good run, not a great qualifying run on Friday night, started back in 31st, Ricky Rudd in the 21 car. He is up to the 12th position. He finally has his crew chief back, Michael Fatback McSwain. He's been recovering from back surgery. This car has been involved in three wrecks in the first three races of 2005, and none of them were of his making. So good to see this car they just want to see the checkered flag besides being in the garage area. The run right now is 12. There are 15 cars on the lead lap. Now the last of those is Brian Vickers, who had a small role in the first lap, got caught up a little bit in that the, what preceded the first lap accident. And he's about three seconds from going a lap down. As you watch Jamie McMurray and Kevin Harvick battle along with Mike Bliss. This is at 19th place. Debris going into turn one in the quad oval, the dog leg here between the start and finish line and the first corners. And I think who that's going to really benefit, a man that was running pretty good to begin of the race, the 20 car, Tony Stewart, because he had went a lap down, he should get this free pass. That'll be a big break for Tony and that 20 group. Big break for a lot of cars. Yeah. Now we can make some chassis adjustments. Dale Jr. just went two laps down. 
Yeah, not a good break for him. Jeff Burton, Casey Mears, and Brian Vickers were at the tail end of the lead lap, and uh, so they get a reprieve due to the caution flag. Everyone pulls up behind the pace truck. There's the Victory Junction gang, Camp Cam, on board the Brawny look, Dodge look of Kyle many, Petty. Look how many tear-offs they had on yeah. that windshield. That's what all those tie wraps were. Just look at them right there. That is all tear-offs, and that's just something, rather than try to pull a tab, they can just hook your finger in a tie wrap and pull them off. The reason that we're seeing a lot more tear-offs, and we're seeing them on the front of other race cars, is because these tires are wearing so much more than they did last year. They're getting a lot more rubber on the racetrack. That rubber is ending up on the windshields and on the hoods and the roofs of the cars. You'll see a lot of black marks on the cars as we go through the race today. And Darrell, even though it's become a little bit overcast here, this is probably one of the worst racetracks in the world late in the afternoon driving off in the turn one with the sun. Greg Biffle will head for Doug Rickert and leave everybody, uh, lead everybody down pit road, Dick. And he has got a terrific race car, Mike. The only change they're going to make to this car besides four tires and fuel, they're going to put a half a round of wedge in the left rear. That'll add just a little tiny bit of weight to the left rear tire, help the back end of the car, stick to the racetrack a little bit better. The pit crew has been stellar all year long. There goes the half round in to Jeannie. Jimmy Johnson telling his crew chief, Chad Canals, that the car is turning good and comfortable, but he needs a little bit of help in the center of the turn and off. So the plan here is to raise the track bar, make a slight air pressure adjustment, and he's off. Steve? Jenny Carl Edwards saying the 99 is very comfortable. They just dropped left side air pressures a quarter pound. The 97 is in. Kurt Busch, they're going to make a return visit. A lot of conversation. Close call between the 9 of Kane and the 6 of Martin. Look for the 97 to make a return visit. They want to take full advantage of this caution to fix that left front fender. That brace is broken. It's pushing that valence back, and they feel like the car's running great considering the cosmetic damage, but they feel like, hey, it's better to be at the end of 20 cars than 42. They're going to take advantage of this caution. You saw right there, though, Ricky Rudd, the 21 car. They were the real, real winner on pit road, gained four spots with that pit stop. So when your car's working good, your pit crew works good. There you see it right there, Ricky Rudd gained four spots. A lot of teams like Joe Nemechek, Mark Martin, Michael Waltrip gaining two. And right there, if you notice, Greg Biffle in the 16, he had one of the fastest pit stops as far as pit road time. You saw the red light on Casey Kane, not his fault. He had to swing wide around Michael Waltrip, who left his tail hanging out on the edge of Pit Road there. Coming down to the green flag for the restart to begin lap 90, Greg Biffle brings Jimmy Johnson, Carl Edwards, Joe Nemechek, and Mark Martin on the outside of the lapped cars. Kurt Busch made a late stop for cosmetic and aero adjustment to that left front fender, so he's tail end Charlie along with Tony Stewart who got the free pass. Look at these guys, they're already three wide coming off turn two down the back straightaway. get up there to be the first car a lap down where maybe he can get the free pass should we get another call and Dale Jr. up high two laps down a drive through pit penalty calls one of them and for the lead Jimmy Johnson, Greg Biffle going at it. Looks a lot like yesterday with Carl Edwards right there with him. Yeah, it's like Jimmy Johnson in the 48 saying, look, you you stole my thunder. You came to pit road a little early under green while ago and got those tires. I want this lead back here side by side that time past the start finish line. Sixth lead change of the day. He's got to find his way up from the back. Let's hear what he had to say prior to, excuse me, Carl, let's hear what Carl Edwards had to say prior to his good stuff. Okay, let's hear from Kurt. I wonder who you're from to begin with. I'd, I'd rather try to fix this thing early on. I think we're abusing our right front. The only way to fix that is go to the back of this pack and put a brace in there to keep it kicked out. I mean, it stopped right there. So you leave it and just adjust on it. I think there's probably only about, what, 20 cars on the lead lap now? 
thinking about where he's going to be and what needs to be done. If you keep the driver and the crew chief working together, that's going to make the, uh, the end result a whole lot better. Seven lead changes after, once we got racing after the lap one crash that involved seven cars. A short caution for debris allowed everybody to pit. And now we're back under green with Jimmy Johnson leading Greg Biffle, Carl Edwards, Joan Emacek, and Mark Martin. Currently running 16th, as you got to look from the FedEx car. Jeff Hammond, Larry McReynolds was, was talking about the decision, the communication, obviously. Uh, that happened, I would imagine, at least the problems with the 97 car and that initial first lap wreck when his car was just slightly grazed. Yeah, when it's slightly grazed, there's still the damage. And what you see and you hear him talking about how critical that is. They needed to fix it so they could really get serious about making their chassis adjustments. You know, we laugh a lot of times about telling the driver to shut up and drive. But that communication, being able to get that information back and forth and making sure you make the right decisions is the key to having a successful race team. And right now, Jimmy Fanick and Kurt Busch are on the same page. Jeff Burton, Richard Childers racing up to 11th. He was involved narrowly escaping a major wreck in the part of that, but certainly was involved in that first lap pilot. Yeah, he just barely got through there, but he's done a really good job as far as working his way up through the pack today. And, and it's just good to see him back and being competitive. Now, what do you tell it if you're one of those drivers who is a lap down or two laps down? As we got to look with Dale Jarrett on board UPS. What do you, what do you tell on your driver? Well, right now, Jeremy Mayfield is the guy that's one lap down, and he's in the best position in case the caution does come out. You want to let him know what he needs to do. Keep the 12 car behind you. You just need to hang here with the leaders. Try not to abuse your tires. You're in a good position. Caution comes back out. We're going to get an opportunity to move our way back up. We still got a lot of racing to go. You can't quit. You got to figure out strategies to fight your way back up on that lead lap and give your team an opportunity to score points. And to fight, you need to communicate well. Kyle Busch in the five car having some communication problems with his crew and Matt Yoakum has the latest. Matt? Caution was a big break for Kyle Busch. His team was back to the old-fashioned way of communication, doing hand signals, sticking his hand out the window if he was loose on entry or up on the roof, loose on exit. Now, during this caution, they switched out. They diagnosed it was his radio push the talk button, something broken, possibly in the wiring. This wraps around the steering column, bolts to one of the spokes in the steering wheel. They changed that out, and now communication is back like it should be on the five car. Kyle Busch running in the 25th position. Still a nice comeback after a qualifying crash here on Friday night. He did not get the most of time and had to start based on car owner points. That's Kyle Petty. And you see on one of the steering wheel spokes, uh, the radio button there. Yeah, that's it. The uh, yeah, right there is the radio button. Kyle looks pretty comfortable in his car. He's not, uh, you see his arm, he's not He's not straining. He's, he's just pretty comfortable. He's working the steering wheel a little bit, getting the car to go through the corner the way he wants it to. But he looks pretty comfortable. You can see he kind of got a relaxed grip on the steering wheel. Kind of got our own cruise control. place. Scott Riggs trying to hold Michael Waltrip, who once again is marching his Napa Chevy toward the front. Still around the bottom of the racetrack where he's been the entire 101 laps. Where I don't think he's ever been his whole career here, Daryl. He likes to rim ride here. Uh, well, he likes that car, I guess, and it's a uh, <laughs> hook in the bottom for him. It looks like it's good on the long run. He seems to fall back a little on the restarts, but then as they run along and the tires start to wear a little bit, that car really gets better for him. And I know he's on fairly fresh tires, but there, what I'm impressed with, when he picks that throttle up, just listening to the engine, he's able to stay in it. He's not having to feather and play with it. And he's racing Scott Riggs right there, and uh, Scott's on another good run today. He's running 10th, and uh, he's quietly going about his business. And, but, and I know he's happy with this run because he missed the show here, Scott Riggs in the 10 in the fall. Waltrip completes the pass, and again, this is uh, this is really out of character. So he's outside for now. Really out of character for Michael. You'll be clear when you get. 
Since Harry Gant retired, Michael had always been the first driver to find the top lane of the racetrack here. Harry was high, wide, and handsome. Yes, sir. I'll tell you who's made another great recovery, Jeff Burton in that 31 car. Started back in 38. Remember, he was involved slightly in that crash back on the back stretch on lap one, and now he's up there battling for the 10th position with Scott Riggs in the 10. Good recovery for Kevin Hamlin, Jeff Burton. Remember that great finish back in 2001 for Dale Earnhardt? With Kevin Harvick driving for Dale Earnhardt, this crew chief for this car, Kevin Hamlin, was the crew chief. Another nice recovery for the driver who got loose off turn two. And, and again, Casey Mears' spin uh, was what triggered that big wreck on lap one. We have been unable to confirm whether or not there was contact between the 41 of Mears, the Nicorette Dodge, and Scott Riggs to initiate that or whether Mears just got loose as one driver who drove through it told us. Yeah, that 41 car. Now, just remember, I think it was about a year ago here. He almost, he had a car that could have won this race and he had an engine failure right near the end of the day. Otherwise, he may have been in victory circle. Take a look back at earlier today and show you what happened. Contact there off of turn two. And somehow, some way, I got to believe that had an effect on what happened behind us that made contact. I'm not sure what happened. 10 looks like he may have gotten into 41, but it's hard to tell. Now we've completed 106 laps. Jimmy Johnson leading Greg Biffle by just a couple car lengths. Happy uh, Palm Sunday here from all of us at Fox from Atlanta. Here's a look at the Coca-Cola racing family in today's race. It's also the first day of the spring. And right now, Jimmy Johnson, your leader, but Greg Biffle running second. We followed Kirk Bush and Tony Stewart, uh, some of their story throughout the afternoon. We've gone through 112 laps with 213 to go here in the Golden Corral 500. And you know, I was watching the movie Moses the other night, and I looked for Dick Bergeron in the background. Actually, he was uh, fixing the uh, three chariot wheel, and uh, Dick Bergeron has the latest on Craig Biffle currently running second. Dick? Uh, now, Chris, didn't your therapist tell you to stop that stuff, that your ego isn't going to be any more better by picking on me? Anyway, Biffle has had a terrific run. Uh, his crew chief, Doug Richard, has been calling out the lap times to him until he got right behind the number 48, Jimmy Johnson. He just called on the radio, Biffle did, and said, I have never had so much fun in my life. A few laps ago, as he came by his pit, Biffle let out a war whoop and said, so much grip, it's awesome. Steve? Well, Carl Edwards also having a good day, Dick. He's just told his crew chief, Bob Osborne, his car is just a little bit free in the center, but he said a few laps ago, he had buzzed his tires, so he's just gonna back off just a hair. Also asking spotter Bobby Hudson what sort of lines the other guys are running. Hudson replied that the 01 of Donimacek was running a higher line. Carl said, I'm too free up high. We'll work on that on our next stop. There is Edwards in third behind Jimmy Johnson and Greg Biffle. To give you an idea what tires are worth, Brian Vickers just made a green flag pit stop, came back out on track, and is running four tenths of a second faster than this man, his teammate, your leader, Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, that is just, it's a little bit early on this stop right here. We anticipate that uh, probably maybe he had a vibration or something, but yeah, it's worth a lot. I think if I was struggling, Larry, I'd be doing some short pitting because tires do make such a big difference. Now, here's Vickers we just spoke of. He has new tires, 160 miles an hour, 162 in the middle of the corner. What does that translate to? How about 260-some feet per second? That's almost a football field. Oh, got a second. car smoking down yep. in turn one. Uh, Mike Wallace. Car has been running pretty badly. Remember Wallace? Wallace comes on to pit road. I'm sorry, we were talking about Brian, and we're going to get a caution. Yeah, the four car just put out quite a bit of smoke, and I'm sure he must have put out some debris. He'd been running on seven cylinders, uh, hearing go by and making quite a bit of noise. And he lost an engine on Friday. That's the reason he had to go to the rear of the field. I think this caution should be a huge break for Jeremy Mayfield, the 19 car. Yeah, he will another, get the free pass. Uh, yeah, 10-4. Now, we, we mentioned Brian Vickers coming in early. Uh, he had a vibration. It felt like, it felt like as a, we took grip out of the back, but it felt like the front just wasn't gripping as good. So, yeah, just to go a little bit, just what you're talking about. 
Yeah, obviously that caution was a big break for Jeremy Mayfield. We just mentioned about him getting the free pass, but Brian Vickers is the guy that did not want to see that caution because he's he is now a lap down. So when we restart, there'll be 16 cars on the lead lap with the addition of Mayfield. No so question. You, you know, when things like that happen, you always say, man, how unlucky can I be? Make a pit stop and a dead gun caution comes out. Pit road will be very busy with these 15 or 16 cars. Dick Bergen, I'm sure, four tires and more adjustments. Well, no adjustments at all for Biffle. He likes the cars so much, all they're going to do is put four tires on it. Same air pressure, no wrenches in the back of this car. He has got a real weapon today. To Jeannie. Well, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson still a little snug in the center. It actually just started again. Though he's hoping the air pressure adjustment will free the car up, Steve. Just a quarter round of bite in the left rear for Carl Edwards. Just a little bit free. Four tires. Good, consistent stop for the 99. Matt? The sixth car, Mark Martin. Best car here last fall. Didn't get the victory. Losing a little bit of time on the left rear, but they said the car was free most of the day. It had snuck up. They made a track bar adjustment to try to tighten him up a little more. Track bar also for the nine of Casey Kane. There you see the race off pit road. Mark Martin. Good top five run. Those guys gained two positions, as well as Elliot Sadler in the 38 group and Jeff Burton in the 31. I think the reason the 48, the 48 car lost that one spot, Larry, is they had a tire laying in front of the car, and when the uh, right front tire changer and the jackman went around to the left side, they had to jump the tire to get to the other side of the car. Hurt them just a little bit. Here they come. You see the tire, I, I think, he throws this tire out here in front of the car, right there. Been going to worse now. See, he's hung up. He's falling. It really hurt the jack man. It really hurt him getting around the car. And I mean, you're not talking about a, maybe a half a second, but when you're changing four tires, dumping this fuel in in 13 to 14 seconds, huge difference. Don't want to lose the lead in the pits. That's a happy group there. That's right, Doug. Pump them up. Got a long way to go, buddy. currently fourth today yesterday ran in the bush race was on the pole went the first 29 laps fell back and then had to work his way back up through the field carl edwards did it like michael vick working through a defense here in atlanta and the 25 year old from columbia missouri pulled into victory lane with his first ever bush series win did the famous backflip in his victorious war this is unbelievable i gotta thank um a lot of people this is the biggest win of my career first bush win Thank Charter, first of all. Oh, man, uh, Roush Racing, Jack Roush, Brad Parrott, my whole crew. This is awesome. To win from the pole and, and to come out here and race with guys like Tony Stewart and Jimmy Johnson, they're unbelievable. So this is the biggest win of my career. Million dollar smile worth flipping over. Carl Edwards and Ford built for the road ahead. His road ahead built with a lot of optimism. Now in the 99 car in today's cup race, currently running fourth behind another Ford and Greg Biffle. Mark Martin is third, Jimmy Johnson second. We're getting ready to go green. Let's rejoin Daryl, Larry, and Mike. Carl Edwards' road ahead is filled with two Fords, teammates of his, and a Chevrolet. As the Roush contingent owns three of the front four spots as we go back to green to start lap 123. What do you say, Larry? I'd say grab those knobs, throw them all the way, and let's crank it up. goes on he's gonna be up there battling his teammate Carl Edwards in the 99 yeah this is the best track position Mark has had he's been hard back in about seventh eighth ninth place he's up there in clean air now pretty clean anyway that battle right behind him Jamie McMurray in the 42 and Bobby Hamilton in the 32 on the low side or outside post center that's the battle to be the first car a lap down to hopefully get a free pass there you see them side by side right there
Rutgers men. And Mark Martin has two wins here, chasing a third now. This team trying to stay ahead of the racetrack. They went back and forth debating whether to make the track bar adjustment or not, even though the car has started to snug up. Mark said, let's use this run as an experiment for later to see how much this track in this car tighten up on this run so we can plan ahead to the finish. One car that shot forward on that restart was Tony Stewart. Right now, he's in a big pack of traffic just ahead with uh, Kevin Harvick just behind, but Stewart has climbed up into the top dozen, battling Jeff Burton for position and trying to gain on Blaney. Now remember, when this race started today, it was very, very sunny out, and uh, the track temperature was probably a little, little higher than it is right now, Larry, and that may be why you see some of these guys that were struggling a little bit back in there starting to move forward now. Unless you just mentioned that you think it's getting a little overcast and cooling down. If you notice, the air temperature has not changed that much, but just look at how much the track has cooled down, and that definitely changes the handling characteristics of these race cars. That's what these teams and crews are trying to keep up with. When you've got a soft tire like we have here this year, uh, the tires are much happier when the track uh, temperature is lower than uh, what we started to race. So the tires are getting happier, and uh, some of the cars are too. Right with Jeff Burton right here, he just he just got passed by Kurt Busch that 97 car, and that was a battle for 13th. Kurt struggled a little bit after that last restart after the repairs were made. Looks like maybe they made some more adjustments that gets this car a little better. The amazing thing, guys, is we're not quite halfway. We have 16 cars on the lead lap, but we have 12 cars fighting to get back on the lead lap. It's only one lap down. And one thing I noticed when they repaired the uh, 97 car of Kurt Busch, they had that left front fender way, way out there. So they may have had to come back down pit road and work on that and get it streamlined a little bit better because that'll make you loose when you get that left front fender out too far. Matt's been in Kurt's pit. Mike, Jimmy Finney, Cole, Kurt Busch on the radio. We are done fixing the cosmetic portion of this race car. Now we can just work on the chassis handling. We told you earlier the brace was broken. They have fixed a lot underneath that fender. Now they're just trying to dial him in. Chassis-wise, he's running in the 13th position. Running behind Dave Blaney in front of Stewart and Burt. Well, you think about with the damage he had early on, he started back early in the race in 40th place and marched right up into the top five. Then they fixed the fender and he struggled a little bit, so maybe they broke it again. We talked at the top of the day about drivers who competed in yesterday's 312 mile bush race and would they have a leg up on the drivers who didn't get any time on the track yesterday. Here's, for some, here's the finish of yesterday's race, the top 10. Nine of those top 10, the first nine finishers, are also racing today. Let's give an attaboy, though, to Michelle Jordan Jr. And only his fifth Bush Series start, he was best in class. He all probably felt as good as Carl Edwards did. Yeah, he's a new dad, you know. He's got to step it up now. He's got to take care of the family. Hey, what, ever since that last restart, that last pit stop, I've been watching Joe Nemechek in his O1 one car. He drove by Mark Martin for fourth. Now he just overtook Carl Edwards for the third position in the 99. I think that uh, Joe has got to be so disappointed after that run he had in California. He had the car to beat, and uh, it's good to see him back up there. Got a chance again today, Jeannie. Absolutely. That's what they're banking on, as I mentioned earlier, Joe said. He really felt like this was going to be their weekend, and they tried to foreshadow what was going to happen with the weather here, and that's kind of what we saw at the last pit stop. The car had really tightened up as we watch yet another lead change here today. The 01 tightened up. They gave a track bar adjustment, some air pressure adjustment, again, to compensate for what they thought would be the weather change, and it appears to be working, guys. 11th lead change of the day as Greg Biffle drives past Jimmy Johnson. But he's not ready to give up because Biffle did it on the low side, and then Biffle went to the high side. You can see Jimmy Johnson just peeking to the low side as they came off, too. Nice thing out on the midway here at Atlanta in the Post-it booth, Greg Biffle's sponsor. Uh, folks can write post-it notes to servicemen abroad uh, in a co-promotion with the National Guard. Pretty neat deal. As you oh watch boy. from our Quaker State aerial coverage. That ride that Hammond and I had this morning in that big old Chinook coming into the third turn over there, and he banked it in there, you know. I said, whoa, hang on, Hammond. <laughs> that was quite a ride. That was a thrill right there, boys. Scott Riggs, eighth, and the nine of Casey Kane, tenth. 
Our pole sitter, Ryan Newman, in the 12, is a lap down in 22nd. Here's Matt. Both Riggs and Kane trying to knock down their first Next Hell Cup career victory. Now, Scott Riggs says the 10 car has been pretty comfortable most of the day. If anything, a little on the tight side. The last run, he was a little loose on entry, but great from the center off. Meanwhile, Casey Kane in the nine cars, he's trying to work around the lap car of pole sitter Ryan Newman, whose car has just been bad tight all day long. Now, Kane says his car also, as you see him, motor on the outside, has just gone to the tight side. It will not turn a rocket ship earlier in the race battling an ill-handling car now. Well, Daryl had talked about it. I think it's because basically the racetrack has changed. Yeah. Hey, you know, a, a guy that's, uh, well, you can see where the Chargers are running right there. Three of them on the lead lap, Daryl. The uh, guy that's running a pretty darn good race is uh, Mr. Combo right there. Uh, he's in sixth place right now, Elliot Sadler quietly been uh, in the top 10 and a lot like Mark Martin looks like his car has gotten much better with this overcast condition. We've been seeing it all year long guys a lot because I think of the package these cars have and a lot because of the weather changing comers and goers and we're seeing it here again today. I just believe a lot of it has to do with and I, I, I only other term I know you make your tires mad. You don't hunt, your car doesn't handle so good. You make your tires happy, you make your car handle good, you seem to go forward. Carl Edwards has drawn a bead on Joe Nemechek, trying to get third place back. Now they have now fallen three and a half seconds behind race leader Greg Biffle. So we'll see if Carl's content to ride a while, see if they can make up a little bit of that or if he's gonna go back after Nemechek. I just get the sense, based on what I saw yesterday with Carl Edwards, I just get the feeling that he's saying, look, I'm learning a lot following guys like Jimmy Johnson, and I'm looking in my mirror, and I got uh, Mark Martin coming up behind me. These guys are pretty darn smart. They've won a lot of races. I think I'll go to school. And as you said, overheating those tires is like overcooking a steak. You can't get it back. <laughs> no. It is what it is. These two guys been going at each other for about the last 15 or 20 laps. We're riding with Michael Waltrip in the 15, looking back at Dave Blaney in the 07. These guys have been battling for 11th for a number of laps. So good runs for both these guys. And Michael doesn't seem to be, you know, he's been up in the top five or six, and all of a sudden he doesn't seem to be quite as good as he was earlier. We're 23 laps from halfway in the Golden Corral 500, presented on Fox by M3 Power from Gillette. Don't forget to check out NASCAR Nation this week and every week, Monday through Friday. It's on speed, a behind-the-scenes look. Get to know the drivers and more about America's fastest-growing sport, NASCAR Nation. Check for local listings and times in your area. Greg Biffle leading with 179 laps to go, taking the lead for the third time uh, earlier today. Jimmy Johnson running second, Carl Edwards third. Those Roush cars, three of the top five in points coming into the race today and holding their own here. Well, you've got to believe right now, Carl Edwards won that race yesterday. How much information did they transfer to today's race? Because all these cars seem like they're just working so flawlessly, and they're working good on long runs as well as the short runs. These cars are extremely good, and, and as a group, as we see Carl Edwards right here, uh, yesterday's winner the Bush race, it, it, they make it look so easy. You got the veteran Mark Martin right there, just kind of following the run, young rookie right there in fourth place. It's just good to see all of them there just very patiently working on their cars and thinking about, hey, with 50 laps to go, we're really going to cock the hammer and let these guys get at it. All right, let's get back to uh, Carl Edwards and Steve Burns with a report on the 99 car. Steve? Well, Chris, just a little while ago, Darrell Walter talked about making those tires angry. Before the pit stop on lap 118, Carl Edwards told his crew, I buzzed the tires. That was my fault. I'm not going to do that anymore. And as Jeff Hammond said, the game plan here in the 99 camp is take care of the equipment until 50 to go, and then they're going to go strong. Dee, Dee I guess it's a common theme. Everybody worried about their tires. It makes perfect sense. The 48 of Jimmy Johnson coming on the radio a little bit ago and said, look, I'm a little tight. That was so shortly, guys, after he gave up the lead, and he said, everything's pretty much okay. I'm just going to ride around for a while, if you don't mind, and try to take care of my stuff and really just watch the tires, what he's talking about. Another Hendrick car, a 25, of course, reporting tire problems. He had to come in, and you better believe the 48 crew was making their way down to check out the tires. As it turns out, 
There was nothing wrong with that tire, and uh, Jimmy would like to keep it that way with his. Thanks, Jenny. Green flag stop for Casey Mears, so now we have 15 cars on the lead lap. Let's take you back to the after effect of the lap one crash. Out of the race, Mike Garvey, Travis Quaffle, Shane Meal from that one. But look at Bobby Labonte's team left of your screen. A whole new set of front end sheet metal on that car so he can go out and run for points. And Jeff Gordon, 76 laps down, but they've got him back out there at half competitive speed. I mean, better than minimum speed. No way to salvage a good day out of this, but you've got to get what you can get. Gordon has already advanced two positions from where he would have been if he stayed in the garage. That's worth six Nextel Cup points. And depending on how things fall the rest of the race, might be able to end up with a top 35. Well, that might be encouraging to some of the other teams because 15 of the last 32 races have been won by Hendrick or Gibbs at this racetrack. Now, that's good news for the Ford guys, except for the fact that Ford has won one race here in the last 15. And so uh, with Jimmy Johnson lurking there and uh, the Ford boys running as strong as they are, maybe today's the day to change all that. That's a big change, Daryl, because on the old configuration of this race back in the Ned Jarrett days or the Bill Elliott days, this was every bit of Ford racetrack. But when I think about that 24 car, Jeff Ford and Robbie Loomis, I mean, what an up and down year already just four races. They win the Daytona 500. They have engine problems at Fontana. They finished fourth last week at Las Vegas, moved to third points, get involved in a lap one crash here. Yeah, you mentioned Casey Mears. Yeah, he was still one of those cars that was on the lead lap in the 41 car. We get the report. You see him right there. He had a flat tire. The reason he had to make that unscheduled pit stop. And he's about to fall another lap down. Greg Biffle, Jimmy Johnson, Carl Edwards, Mark Martin, and Joe Nemechek. 153 laps complete. The Golden Corral 500 on Fox is presented by new M3 Power Nitro from Gillette. Feel the power of the world's best shade. Kurt Busch has just slammed the wall exiting turn number two and brought out the caution. Yeah, he's already been in the wall here, and the tire's down on the right front. You heard him say earlier that they were abusing that right front a little bit. Man, look at the debris fly. But the good news is all that debris brought a caution out where they can get the pit road and uh, maybe fix things. I think, I think he's got to, oh, goodness gracious, Mike have gone that way. <laughs> squeeze through there. I think they got quite a bit more damage than just that fender. Matt's there. Second right front tire that Kurt Busch says he has lost today. They're going to take it behind the wall to make further repairs. Just moments before he hit the wall, he said, we're going to make a track bar adjustment, want to go down. And he's also talking about what air pressure adjustment he wanted to make to that right front. But boy, this day has turned ugly with a championship point leader coming in to Atlanta, Kurt Busch. Two of the top five have had trouble. Kurt Busch, the point leader, and Jeff Gordon coming in here fourth, swept up in the lap one crash. You know, Kurt's not going to, he's not going to like coming to Atlanta. Uh, you know, last year blew up here and, uh, Really got him in a dogfight for the championship. Bad luck today again. Nick Bergman. Well, Greg Biffle is having an absolute career day here at Atlanta, and they are going to change virtually nothing in the car. A half a pound of air out of the left front. That's about the biggest change they've made in this thing all day long. It's a little bit tight on brand new tires, and then the car comes in. Jeannie. With 48 of Jimmy Johnson, he's saying, look, the car just is getting tighter. I guess the 16 really has their stuff figured out because I need something to help me center off track bar adjustment and four tires, Steve. Carl Edwards still just a little free, a quarter round of wedge, and you see they add a piece of tape to the grill. Matt. Good stop going by Mark Martin's team. He's away. It's going to be close. Getting, uh, looks like the 48's going to get him. Slight track bar adjustment for Martin. He was solid before the stop running. I tell you, that 16, they have been on the mark all day long, but it looks like Joe Nemechek, that group gained two positions. Carl Edwards, the 99, they lost two positions. Casey Kane down here, Tommy Ball and that group, they gained two spots. There you see the times right there, and that's the entire pit road. Greg Biffle, Joe Nemechek, you see they had the fastest of the top ten. Ricky Rudd, Michael Waltrip, the slowest of pit road times, including the pit stop. Jeannie? 
Well, guys, the track here in Atlanta was a place that Bobby Labonte had a lot of fond memories to carry along with him. I don't know if today will qualify. We saw him taken out so early in this race, too early. And then he literally had his hand out the window right when Kurt Busch hit the wall. Some type of projectile, some piece of metal hit his hand. So he's doing okay, but uh, insult to injury, I guess now, or maybe the other way around. Yeah, injury to insult, I think you're right, Jeannie. <laughs> Lap down car is fitting. There's Kyle Busch, he's made a, a nice recovery here, running one lap down after the problems he's had, but there's our pole sitter, Ryan Newman, uh, whose day coming from the pole has gone the other way. This group here, they own the mark. When we see it week in and week out, if the car and the driver's on the mark, the crew's on the mark. Welcome back to Atlanta Motor Speedway. 163 laps. We've just taken halfway in the Golden Corral 500. Greg Biffle in front of Jimmy Johnson, Mark Martin, Carl Edwards, Elliot Sadler, and Ricky Rudd. Five Fords in the top six spots. Then Dave Blaney, Casey Kane, Jeremy Mayfield, and Jeff Burton. Let's show you what happened to Bobby Labonte as he was cruising around here, 48 laps down, when there was a problem with Kurt Busch's tire. Tire flat. And things begin to shred. Now, there is uh, Labonte way up at the top of your screen right there. That was a pretty good sized piece of rubber that hit his hand. So hopefully Labonte is okay. need to mention that caution was timely for Jimmy McMurray in the 42 car. He gets the free pass, so he's now back on the lead lap. We have 15 cars on the lead lap. Let's get downstairs for a visa race break with Jeff Hammond. A lot of times we keep hearing these teams talk about making track bar adjustments. Well, folks, I want to take just a second. We turn our Ford Cutaway car up on the side. This is what we call a track bar. It actually ties into the frame as well as the rear end housing. It controls the rear roll center of the car. And what the teams can do, it affects the car as far as entering the corner, exiting the corner. So they'll make adjustments by running this screw up and down. You can see it moving up. But this is what we call, we say, making a track bar adjustment. And you're moving this bar, which affects the rear roll center of this race car. All of these types of adjustments have a bearing on what these four tires do, entering as well as through the center of the corner and exiting. So when you hear us talk about making track bar adjustments, now you understand where a track bar is located at, what it actually ties in, which is the rear end housing, and how we adjust it during a pit stop located right here out the top of the back rear window. Mike? Thanks, Jeff, for that Visa race break. 164 laps complete. Just past halfway. Now, another penalty on pit road. This time, not speeding, but uh, not staying in the, what do they call it, the established lane in the driver handbook. I guess it'd be out of bounds if you want to look at it that way. There's a commit line down here. You see the cones? You see Joe Nemechek, the 01, hit the cone, so basically he did not make it before the commit line in NASCAR's eyes. There's a car that was running in the top five or six. The penalty will be, since it was under caution, tail into the longest line, so he's going to be back there in about 15th position. They went ahead and came to pit road, topped off with fuel, might as well. Yeah, it looked like he, uh, he got come on pit road a little too hot, run up on the back of uh, the 38 car there, Elliott Sadler, and had to swing out to keep running into Elliott. Jamie McMurray got the free pass. He'll be the 15th car on the lead lap when we restart this race shortly. The Golden Corral 500 presented by M3 Power from Gillette is brought to you by Aaron's. Aaron's makes dreams come true with dream prices on dream products. By Coca-Cola Racing Family. Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of NASCAR. By Lowe's, where you'll find all your home improvement needs. Lowe's, improving home improvement. And by Don, you can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horn. Don. Time for our State Farm Safety Report. So far, it's been a safe race through 167 laps. Jeff Hamlet is near the Ford Cutaway car. Jeff? Whenever guys happen to have problems, maybe with the drive shaft, what NASCAR has done, here's the drive shaft. You'll notice it's painted white. That way, in the event the drive shaft does happen to break and falls out on the racetrack, the other drivers can avoid it. 
the black asphalt, white dry shaft, they know to try to stay away from it, as well as NASCAR has mandated a safety strap to try to help that prevent that dry shaft from falling out and hitting the racetrack as we get ready to go back to green. Greg Biffle out in front once again. This time, Jimmy Johnson in tow. Mark Martin, Carl Edwards, Elliot Sadler, Ricky Rudd, Dave Blaney, Casey Kane, Mayfield, Burton, and Riggs. Just to follow up a little bit on what Jeff was talking about, those drive shafts used to be black. And it'd throw somebody throw one out on the racetrack, you wouldn't see it, and you'd run over it. So NASCAR uh, started painting them white. It makes them a little bit easier to see. Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car, his car is so strong through the center of the corner. Now the car third in line right there, the 32 car, Bobby Hamilton Jr. outside pole sitter. What he'd like to see is a caution. Then he would get the free pass back on the lead lap. I think he's had a good race car, just had that mishap on the back stretch on lap one. Kyle Busch in the five car, remember he is a lap down, pushing Mark Martin in the six. Mark's in the third position. I think it's just so interesting and always I, I know from driving how the track changes when the sun goes in the track cools down and a car that you really didn't like a car that wasn't happy at all all of a sudden you love it so man this thing has come alive and Daryl I still think as we see Dale Earnhardt Jr. the A car the Budweiser car still not happy he's back in 28th position two laps down but how about Ricky Rudd in that 21 car? He's sitting there running in sixth position. This is this is a great turnaround for this race team. Fatback's back, and he back into uh, Fatback yep. is back in tank. track. Back at the track. Back at the track. Nice climb through the field for the veteran from Chesapeake, Virginia today. Mike Bliss running right with him, one lap off the pace in 18th. Lead change again. These two have gone at it all day long, and this will be our if it holds up. At the start finish line, the only place lead changes are officially scored. If Johnson gets his bumper out front, it will be the 14th lead change of the day. And but this is almost like instant replay. Greg Biffle is 16. That group beats everyone off pit road. Jimmy Johnson sits back there for a few laps after a restart, and then he takes the lead. Biffle had stretched out pretty good after that last restart and uh, up, up to this point here. And now it looks like they've made some good adjustments on the 48 car. And uh, he's going to walk the dog. Let's hear what Greg Biffle had to say during this last caution period. We're looking at at least two more stops. Uh, the way it is right now. Probably end up being three or four with caution. Doing a hell of a job there, drivers. Keep it up. Thanks. Kind of having fun today. We'll, just, uh, we'll keep everything smart. Keep everybody's head in it here. Still a long way to go. But, Darrell, that's information you want to know when you're out there. Yeah, I can tell you how many laps there is to go in the race, but you want to know how many pit stops are we looking at? How many more chances are we going to get to adjust this race car? You know what I like? Doug Rucker, you think about Doug. He was Dale Earnhardt's crew chief in 1980. When he, he won came, his first championship. Won his first championship. Came from California. Young kid, wet behind the ears, and he has hung in here, and here he is probably in one of the best situations he's been in in his life. And he's been around. He's worked for a lot of different teams, and he's been in the truck series and other places. But boy, when he got with Greg in this in this 16 car, they have really jailed. The other thing I liked, Daryl, listening to that was how calm his driver sounded. You'd have thought <laughs> that instead of running that car at 190 miles an hour, he was sitting on the couch. Jimmy Johnson, last nine races, five wins, nine top tens. Unbelievable. It, it, it just seems it doesn't matter where we race. Short tracks, road courses, speedways, this team, they are on the mark. And, you know, to, to, to follow up a little bit on last week, just think about how many times that car gets inspected. Torn down, engine, gone through tech. Because when you win, they, they check you out a lot closer than they do if you run fifth or sixth. Lead change number 15. Puts Biffle back to the front. Look at Jimmy's last nine races. Last season are the ones above the line, and then he picked up right where he left off in 2005. Three races, three top fives, including a win. And again, to update, his crew chief, Chad Knaus, uh, penalized by NASCAR, but he has elected, as is his right, to appeal and to stay the suspension until the appeal is heard. Uh, the car's measurement, proof measurement, was found to be out of specification, 
out of adjustment at the conclusion of last week's race. Similar on the five, Alan Gustafson, similar situation with the quarter panel height, out of adjustment. Meanwhile, Kevin Harvick's crew chief, Todd Barrier, is appealing, but he has begun to serve his four-race suspension for unapproved modifications to the fuel cell prior to qualify. Richard Childress and Barrier and Kevin Harvick said earlier that they are hoping to reduce the severity of the suspension, uh, but don't expect to escape it entirely. Since they had tested here and were ready for here, they felt like that was as good a race for Todd to be off as any. Well, that's, that's been that's going on right here at the DW for quite a while between Elliott Sadler and the 38, Ricky Rudd and the 21. These ga guys are battling for fifth position right now. Yeah, a couple of Virginia boys are having at it. Well, let's, uh, let's catch up on uh, Bad Back McSwain. Dick? Well, Ricky Rudd, his driver, started in the 31st position, and right now he's running in the sixth. Fat Back was out for a couple of weeks with back surgery. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. You know, I've been standing up a long time, but I'm fine. How about your race car? Can you get some more spots? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the pit crew's been working really hard. Ricky's driving his tail off. Uh, we're happy with our car. We're just uh, trying to be conservative because of where we are in points. And we'll take every spot we can get. He's working on one now. Look at this guy. He doesn't want to take his eyes off that race car even for a second. Followed it all the way around the racetrack while we're talking to him. You know, this year, as we see Kurt Busch, our champion and our points leader coming into Atlanta back out on the racetrack. Now he's in 37th position, 20 laps down. Just back to Ricky Rudd. You know, we know it's Rusty Wallace's last year, Nextel Cup Mark Martin's last year. A lot of speculation around Ricky Rudd. He made some very powerful but short comments back in January during the meter tour in Charlotte. He said, you know what? When I'm not competitive, when I don't feel like I'm competitive, that's when I walk away. I probably won't have no final year, final season, last call. Well, the way he's running, looks like he's going to be around for a while. Among the drivers that have had trouble today, you've heard about Bobby Labonte and Jeff Gordon uh, swept up in the wreck early on. Uh, but what about Dale Earnhardt Jr.? One lap down due to a pit road penalty, lost another lap, but just plain got lapped on the racetrack, Matt. He's two down. Still two laps down, running back in the 28th position now. The day, as far as points goes, Junior still running in the 27th position in the championship standings with the car still extremely inconsistent. It was loose early, could barely hang on to it. Then the car went back to the tight side where they pitted on lap 119. Now it's back to the loose side. If you look at his times, it's about four to six tenths a second a lap slower than the leader. Not a good day for a guy many figure would be in the championship fight early on this year. Not a good season so far for Junior. I just think when you, you think about Dale Earnhardt Jr., you think about Tony Jr., Yuri Jr., and Sr. That's the only crew chief that man has ever had since he's been in racing. I think you took him out of that comfort zone and it's going to take some time. I'm not saying that there's any problem with Rondo. I'm just saying it's going to take some time. Roush racing teammates, Carl Edwards and Mark Mart, pupil and teacher. Well, maybe, but Edwards, at least in the Bush series, has picked up where Mark Martin left off as far as getting to victory lane is concerned. Now they battle side by side for third. But not surprised to see Mark running good here. You heard Matt Yoakum earlier say he's won here twice, but he ran second here in the fall, led a bunch of laps up to near the end, and this is the same race car. But the thing about it, this Mark Martin, it seems like his car is getting stronger and stronger as this race unfolds. And these long green flags, uh, Larry, is what takes its toll on an engine here. These are high speed lots of RPM and this is a 500 mile race the last 50 uh, miles 75 miles of this race seems like always catches somebody up with an engine problem Ricky Rudd got past Elliott Sadler that's a change at fifth place moves the 48 year old into the top five well, the Ford had one here in 15 races, but let me tell you, there are one, two, three, four, five of them in the top six. This is Casey Kane in the nine car. He's in ninth position. Now, Dell Jarrett in the 88 car. He is 29th, three laps down earlier in the race, had two consecutive pit road speeding penalties under green. That's Scott Riggs just ahead of Kane. They are racing for eighth place. Another good run by Scotty. I, I'm just... Pretty impressed. And another guy that's just ahead of him, Dave Blaney. 
Just trucking along here. He likes it landing like though we almost won a race here a couple years ago. Having a great day today. Yep, Blaney came out of the world of outlaws, came to NASCAR, ran some Bush races, got into Bill Davis's cup car, and he, anybody who was here that day will tell you he would have been a winner. That they not had that hub problem. That gum loose wheel got him. Hey, what, Casey Kane, the one the nine car, got a heck of a run off turn for the last time, and it looks like he's going to carry it down through one and two, but he's got to fall back in line on the backstretch behind Scott Briggs in the 10. Let's update the man that had the penalty the last time we had a caution. Joe Nemechek had been running up in the top five for most of the race, hit the commit cones when they came to pit road, and right now he's only been able to get back to about 12th position. The problem is he's almost a half a lap behind our leader, Greg Biff. Just hard to make up that ground here. It's kind of, when you get in the back like it's kind of like reminds me of the movie Gladiator. You know, every time you go in the arena, it gets a, you get a little bit more competition, gets a little bit tougher. Well, now you're going to have to fight the Lions. Well, Darrell, remember, he restarted back in 16th position, and as many cars as we have a lap down with the inside line, that's like restarting in 32nd position. Brian Newman just in front of Nemechek qualified for his fifth straight pole, but he's going to have to go some to equal his average finish here of 14. Newman is a lap down in 22nd. Remember the new procedure here practice on Friday qualifying Friday night then you don't cut touch the car until race time and certainly Newman had to set up good enough for the pole but not quite good enough yet on race day. There you see it qualifying on the mark race after race just that average finish. Uh, and I talked to some of the members of the Penske organization this morning, and they said, you know what? And we've talked about this, Daryl. They have to figure out how to close the deal. Yes, Start sir. to finish. And, you know, it kind of reminds me of golf. Some guys can drive for, you know, they can drive the ball a mile, but they don't have a lot of finesse when it comes to the greens. Here's Jeannie. In the 48 pit of Jimmy Johnson, where Jimmy is telling his crew chief, Chad Canals, the car is tight into the turn into the center of the turn and actually what it is doing is bogging the engine down slowing it down he said we need something in the right rear or a little less in the left rear to help steer the car planning the adjustments for the pit stop he's one second back of Greg Biffle right now and I think again we've been talking about it it, it keeps clouding up more and more the track keeps cooling down they're gonna have to keep making adjustments to keep up with this and one thing that's bothered me about the uh, 16 car Biffle you, they keep saying don't touch the car they're not making any adjustments. Sometimes that's not the best thing. I mean, that is a substantial drop right there. I mean, you just look, the air temperature has not dropped hardly at all, but just look at the difference in track temperature. That has to make a difference. You ride with Jeff Burton and two laps to go past Casey Kane for ninth. Kane has just repassed him for 10th as they battle with Scott Riggs. Gillette Young Guns, million dollar watch and win game. Find game pieces on specially marked Gillette Oral B and Duracell products. There's this week's Gillette winning code number H49745. Visit GilletteYoungGuns.com for details, rules, and to get a free game piece. There's where the Young Guns are running, one of whom took some time to analyze the surface of this racetrack. Each of the racetracks, uh, when you have fresh tires and tape the nose off and you go rip off a lap, you know you're going fast. You feel that speed. And the thing with Atlanta is it's in the southeast where they have that gritty asphalt. The salt mixture just raises the, 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 the coarseness of the track, chews up tires. And so by lap 30, you want to come in and get tires because you're all over the place. So Atlanta is the fastest place we run on, but yet it drops off almost as bad as Darlington does. So it's a tough place to race now. It's been a tough place for the defending series champion today, Kurt Busch, 21 laps down after multiple tire problems. And here's where the past winners at Atlanta Fair, three of them in the top five, Johnson, Martin, and Rudd, but the rest of them well down the list. Yeah, and those two guys at the very bottom there have, uh, Gordon's got four wins here, Levani's got six, that's 10 wins at the bottom of the list. Caution is out. For the fifth time today, there is Bobby turn Hamilton two. Jr. who was trying to get back to the lead lap, crashing in turn two. 
this caution will be a huge break for one of those past winners that was on that list, Tony Stewart, because he was not very far from going a lap down in that 20 car. And we were very, very close to green flag pit stop starting to break out. Yeah, you know, it always makes you wonder, you get that close to a stop, tire wear out, is that what happened? Uh, you know, he had a right front look like down. And Daryl, it's such a fine line here. We've been hearing these guys all day long talk about their cars being loose, their cars pushing. You can't have a car be loose, but at the same time, if you tighten it up too much, it just works that right front tire. Oh boy, if you lean, these turns are so big here, and if you're leaning on that right front tire, you're leaning on that baby a long time. And during this run, Bobby Hamilton Jr. was running that car very hard, trying to stay in position to get the free pass. Instead, he causes the free pass, and it will go to Brian Vickers. And that's a shame. They had a great run at Las Vegas last week, finished 11th. Came here with another new car, sat on the outside of the front row. So this team's starting to turn it around if they can just get all the luck to work with them. It's baby steps, and they're taking them, and they're getting there, and that's encouraging. Dr. Dirt. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm in Greg Biffle's pit. I've been here all day, and it's the same story. No major changes. They're going to let the right front tires sneeze one half a pound of air pressure, but that's it. This set of tires has essentially the same code numbers as the tires that have come off the car. To Jeannie. From no major changes, how about the 48 where Jimmy Johnson saying all we've been able to do is keep up with the track. Maybe we should double our efforts translation over just for what will be, Steve. Half around a wedge and a track bar adjustment for Carl Edwards. Four tires, he's gotten just a little free. Matt trying to tighten up Mark Martin's race car as the 16 goes by, the 48 goes by. Mark was concerned right before this caution. He was starting to ease out of it a little bit. Thought he might have something amiss with that right front. But nothing else. Referring back, the crew looking over the tires at this moment. See the real loser right there on those pit stops. Mark Martin in the six car. Those guys lose two positions. Jeff Burton's 31 team. They gain him two positions. Dave Blaney in the top 10 loses three. Should see an arm pump there from Jeff Burton. We're riding in his car. He picked up two spots. You see right there, Greg Biffle, Jeff Burton. We talked about the positions gain. Of course, Biffle had none to gain. The fastest times on pit road, Mark Martin, one of the slowest. I think if you listen to Mark Martin's radio, though, and he says, you know, I feel something going on with that right front. A veteran driver, like he said, I'll squeeze out. I'll make it to the pit stop. Guy like Bobby Jr., you know, he doesn't feel that. Bam, into the wall. I heard what he said, but I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. Checking the tire wear in Mark Martin's pit as the lap down cars come in I'd say that was and make their stops. You know, Greg Biffle, we've been talking about his group all day long on their pit stops. Let me show you with one of our animations what's really helping him. Pit selection. They had a pretty decent qualifying. This is an opening to the garage area, so there's no one that pits in that, so he's able to pull right out. No one will ever block him in right there, and that has to be helping their stops as well. And there you see it right there, the opening. Yeah, Tony Stewart is right here, but this goes into the garage area, so they have a clear shot out each time they pit that race car. Now, that's a long stop for Stewart. He's one of the lead lap cars, and uh, he is still there. But just barely, Mike. I yeah. mean, he was hanging on to the lead because they were coming up on him pretty quickly. Take a look at Greg Biffle's pit stops. Position after the pit stop. One every it, it, time can't get any better than that. Remember those times that's four tires and 22 gallons of fuel. You think they're not athletes out there on pit road? I never thought that. <laughs> Matt, how about Mark's tires? Looking over Mark's tires, the team says that they are showing some wear, but nothing more inconsistent than what we've seen earlier. Just a little bit of graininess across the top of the tire. The stop before, Mark is extra sensitive to that right front. The stop before, Pat Trison gave him the temperatures across the, the entire tire, so Mark knew exactly what that tire was looking like temperature-wise to ease any concern that he may have. Well, Darrell, Kurt Busch pops a right front, hits the wall. Bobby Jr. pops a right front, hits the wall. You're going to start thinking about your right front? And the, and the thing that he's telling Mark is when he gives him those tire temps, they take temps in three spots, inside shoulder, middle, outside shoulder. If you're abusing the inside of the tire, you're going to blow it out. And so that's why Mark wants to know, what are my tire temps across that right front? Well, the pit road speeding police is still at work because two cars on the lead lap, Joe Nemechek in the 01, Jeremy Mayfield, too fast entering pit road. It looks like possibly Jimmy Spencer and Matt Kenseth, who are some laps down, too fast exiting, but that's two stops in a row that Joe Nemechek, the 01, they've had some sort of infraction. 
One of the things that's happened, some of those guys back in line a little bit, Larry, is when they get to the end of pit road, there are cars in front of them. And I'm not sure, maybe they're not seeing the commit line until they're inside the box. And I think what's happening a lot on the exiting, some of the teams were telling me that last segment is somewhat of a long segment. And when you clear the last pit box, you think you can go and you can. Right. You think when you're at the end of the pit lane there that you're on your way, but there's still about uh, two more pit boxes to go. Well, let's go with 120 laps to go. Greg Biffle still leading. Jimmy Johnson, Carl Edwards, Ricky Rudd, Mark Martin, Elliott Sadler, 5'4", one Chevrolet in the top half dozen. Then it's Jeff Burton, Chevy, Casey Kane's Dodge, Scott Briggs, and Dave Blaney in the top ten. Boy, it looked like that uh, inevitably here, some, somebody on the restart will spin the rear tires. Looked like that could have happened in a Biffle that time. And Jimmy Johnson in the 48, he's going to take advantage, but Greg Biffle gets that good run on the high side, drag racing down the back stretch. Behind them going into turn one, they were four wide at about sixth place. We well, don't look now, but they're still that way. <laughs> Johnson with the low Chevrolet on the bottom leads this lap from Biffle who takes it right back heading for turn one. Are you sure he let it? Because they were just about neck and neck. Well, you get such a run down the straightaway when you're on the high side like Biffle is and you get bogged down a little when you're on the bottom like Jimmy is there in the 48. That's how come they kind of meet in the middle of the back straightaway. One coming and one going. I must have blinked. They gave that lap to Biffle. And these guys, I mean, we've been counting lead changes at the start finish line. There's no telling how many times they swapped the lead at other areas of the racetrack. And the, the 48 car, Jimmy Johnson, it's hard to stay down underneath somebody running the kind of speeds they're running off the corners here without taking a chance of getting sucked around. Look at Carl Edwards in the 99, our top three, three different lines through one and two. That'd and look that. at that Ricky Rudd, that 21 car up there. A, B, and C line. Now tell me, Daryl, at these speeds running this close, going into the corner like that, is this a little frightening at this stage of the race, or is this just a lot of fun? No, you're having a good time. You know, you kind of know what your car is capable of at this point. So you know how hard you can drive it in. You know how quick but, you can Hey, boy, Ricky Rudd, the 21 car is in trouble. Running in fourth position, it looks like. Boy, he's going to cause everybody here to get in trouble with him. Oh, boy. DWS watching the 21 car. Looks like he maybe have a left rear tire going down. I'm sure on that thing. And, uh, but watching the guys up front, you were talking about a minute ago. When you watch Ricky try to lift around here and get in the, uh, in the on the pit road. He's definitely got a tire going down, and it's the right rear, not the left rear. The right rear looks like from here now. And hopefully, he can get it on pit road and not get himself into some trouble and get run over. He's on pit road. Biggest thing. Can't speed on his pit stop. He's probably going to go a lap down right here, but they just got to get back out there. Dick, they know they have a good race car. Yeah, they do have a race car, but this surely is, he's got no brakes. That's what it is, a busted wheel cylinder he just said, or something of that nature. Brakes are the problem with Ricky Rudd. What a shame. I mean, he's been up there in the top five or 10 for about the last 150 laps. Now, you don't use a lot of brake here in the, in the race itself, but you do lay your foot on those brakes. Lead change, turn two. Johnson with a run from the top to bottom of the racetrack. He edges Biffle, but no way he's going to clear him. <laughs> the, these guys just will not give up, and we still have over 100 laps to go. Right there's where it gets a little touchy for the guy on the inside because he's got to have a little bit of room on the outside to clear, and he just can't quite make it. This time through one and two, Jimmy Johnson to the bottom, Greg Biffle all the way up to the top of the racetrack. The bottom will prevail if you can just stay in the gas as you exit the corner. I mean, the shortest way around is on the bottom, so you're going to have the shortest amount of the distance to go. Sometimes you get bogged down down there, though. Larry both know sometimes you see a situation like this happening. Two guys going side by side like they're doing. You have to sooner or later take your own driver. Man, be smart. Let him go if he's working you that hard. Save your tires and realize at the end of this run, you'll get it back. So you got to throttle back sometimes and realize this big picture is how are you going to finish if you've used that right front tire? And you've already seen when guys do it, they'll wind up in the wall. Well, these are the two best cars on the racetrack right now, a 48 and 16. And uh, they've been, their cars have been really good all day long. I think with the aero package, that little bit smaller rear blade back there, you want to get in clean air as quick as you can. 
Ricky Rudd's really fine ride is over. He's taking that car to the garage. I've been watching this battle right here. This is a battle for about 10th position between Joe Nemechek in the 01, Tony Stewart in the 20, and McMurray in the 42. Remember, McMurray got back on the lead lap. But I've been watching that 20 car, DW, I think you mentioned earlier. It's like he runs good only on fresh tires for a few laps, then he really starts to fade. Got about a 10 lapper there. If they get a caution late and he's on the lead lap, he might be all right, but he's not good on the long run. 110 laps to go at Atlanta Motor Speedway. You're watching the Golden Corral 500 presented on Fox by M3 Power from Gillette. Golden Corral 500 presented by M3 Power from Gillette is brought to you by Nextel. Go to foxsports.com to find out how you can be the Nextel Fan of the Week. I know we call this the Nextel Fan of the Week, but I cannot be a bigger fan of the two gentlemen next to me serving our country. Name and rank, sir. It's our first class promotable, Anthony Garrett. And Captain Michael Sheridan. There we go, getting the cheers now at NASCAR. A big thing with the military, yes? Yeah, it's a big morale booster. Matter of fact, we have three fanatics in Afghanistan right now, Colonel Preissner, Colonel Manning, and Staff Sergeant Arrowwood. All right, get them all in there. And the parallels between the military and NASCAR, do you see them? Uh, definitely. Uh, you've got your drivers on the front lines, all the crews supporting them, and all the fans supporting everybody and everything they do, just like us. All right, and we, of course, support you, our Nextel Fan of the Week, and thank you for serving the country on behalf of Fox Sports, everyone here at the Nextel Experience. Big salute, guys. Back to you. All right, thanks, Jeannie, and to uh, the troops watching across the globe. Glad to have them with us, and appreciate them being part of our Fan of the Week. For more information, log on to foxsports.com. Next tell. Jimmy Johnson, your leader. 103 laps to go, but Atlanta, where champions meet, like on the very first lap, four Cup Series champs, along with five other drivers involved. And both of the backstretch, it started with Casey Mears in the 41, kind of went sideways, and Jeff Gordon caught up with it, along with Matt Kenseth, Kurt Busch, even Jeff Burton. Now, here's a look from Jeff Burton's uh, in car camera. Somehow he weaved through, and then ran into Bobby Labonte. They red flagged it once they got to going. Kurt Busch came in as the points leader tire problem. Yeah, right there, you see a right front tire went down on him. The crew, crew came in, they made a change. He got a lucky break, stayed on the lead lap, but later on, he lost another right front tire. And losing the right front fender, you see, just blew it totally off the race car. Had to go behind the wall to make repairs. And then after that, it's pretty much been the Jimmy Johnson, Greg Biffle show. Johnson in his 48 car, Biffle in his 16. Between the two, they traded leads six times. In this race, we've had 20 lead changes, so every cup race so far this year has had at least 20 lead changes. And right now, Johnson leading Biffle with Carl Edwards, Mark Martin, and Casey Kane rounding out the top five. So Carl Edwards, one of the young drivers, not necessarily a rookie, but Kurt's younger brother, Kyle Busch, who is a rookie, has done a good job of hanging around in this race after a good run last week. Yeah, he's had some trouble here early on, but he's fought his way back. And he's still one lap down, but they've got that race car where literally he's running about fifth on the racetrack, and his lap times are good enough to be in the top ten if he can just get a break and get himself a caution. Right now, they've got the car working pretty well for him. If he can just keep his nose clean he may have an opportunity to fight his way back up there in that top five or top ten meanwhile jimmy johnson trying to become the first driver to win back-to-back -back atlanta races since jeff gordon did it in 1998 and 1999 let's rejoin daryl larry and mike there's johnson with a one second lead on greg biffle then carl edwards mark martin casey kane has taken fifth from this man uh, with Ricky Rudd in the garage, Jeff Burton climbs to the top of the nice guys you'd like to see have a good day list. He is now sixth. He has three fourth place finishes here, two fifth place finishes at Atlanta, all with, uh, well, one with, I think, Stavola brothers and then uh, the rest with Roush racing. And just remember, he started this race back in 38th, and as you just saw in the highlights from Chris and Jeff in the hotel, he was involved in that crash on lap one, so great recovery by this race team. And Childress has five wins in the spring race here at Atlanta, thinking back to not too long ago when Kevin Harvick won this race. And with Dave Blaney running up the top ten, Childress right now has two cars in the top eight. Both those race teams needed good runs here. All these drivers have hero cards. You can get them at the souvenir trailers. Uh, the big collecting thing in baseball and football, other sports, are rookie cards. And I think Steve Burns is about to go us one better. Hey, Mike, remember I told you a little bit earlier, Kenny Schrader told Carl Edwards to go back to Missouri and get in a dirt car. Well, Carl needed an angle, a way to get noticed. His mom, Nancy, suggested that he make business cards. So he did, and it says 
if you're looking for a driver, you're looking for me. Now, a lot of the local racers made fun of Carl, gave him a lot of flack for doing it, but you know what? It worked. One of these business cards made their way to Roush Racing, and now his mom, Nancy, is sitting atop the pit box watching her 25-year-old son race for the win and the weekend sweep. Hang on to that, Steve. That could be a valuable souvenir. All right, D.W., I'm going to put you on the spot. You're hunting a driver for your NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series team a few years ago. Guy gives you a business card. What do you do with it? I'd say, that's nice. <laughs> Probably put it in the folder and move on. Uh, you know, that doesn't happen very often. But you know what I like is guys like him that have taken a little and done a lot. That's what got us. That's what got someone's attention. That's what got Jack's attention. Not taking a lot and doing a little. Yesterday's winner in the Aaron's 312 Bush Series race, his first Bush win after a successful run for Roush in the Craftsman Truck Series. And just look at everything he's trying to accomplish this year. And early in the season, he's accomplished it. He's trying to win the Nextel Cup Championship, and he's well in contention. Now, he's not eligible for Rookie of the Year in Nextel Cup because of the amount of races that he ran last year. But he is eligible for that award in the Bush Series as well as the Bush Series Championship. So of, of the big four, he could accomplish three of them this year. Almost ranked the leader twice. He just goes high three. Never know about him. And that's his spotter, Bobby Hudson, just talking about Jimmy Spencer trying to anticipate, there's that word anticipate, DW, which way Jimmy Spencer in the 50 car will go. Bill Elliott, the hometown hero, moving past Tony Stewart. Here's Elliott Sadler battling Stewart for 14th position. Elliott is a lap down. Debris on the racetrack. Sixth caution of the day. Well, Stewart has really had his problems today, Mike. Uh, they have done just about everything they can to that car. Some of the adjustments have been so serious that he has come in. They've just done all kinds of things to the car on a caution. He'll go out, make another lap, come back in, and change a bunch more stuff on it. Uh, basically, the car has been tight, particularly entering the turns. And in the middle, a guy that a lot of people thought was going to win is having a real tough day. Tony Stewart running in the back. Well, we've seen all day long. Uh, I wouldn't count him out. Uh, you make the right changes on your car, and you can get it back up front. And if we have a short run at the end of the race, you might count him in. That's right. He's pretty quick for 10, 15 laps, look like. <laughs> Obviously, all the crews getting ready to go to work here as we have right at about 92 laps to go. Uh, this would not be the final pit stop should we stay green, but can we have... 15 cars on the lead lap. This should be four tires full of fuel and uh, what teams need adjustments. They'll get those adjustments this time. Biffle and Johnson have each led over 100 laps today. Jimmy just took the lead for most laps led, which is five more bonus points. He's led 117 circuits. Greg Biffle's led 105. Nobody else worth counting today. Nobody else has led more than five laps. Dick Berger impatiently awaiting the rush on to pit road. And now for something completely different, they are going to adjust Greg Biffle's car. Why? Because he didn't lead all the laps in that segment. They're going to try to tighten it up a little bit. Air pressure for sure. Maybe we'll see the wrench go in the left rear of the car as well. Watch this crew. They have been on the money all day long. Adam Emmert is in the front. Mike Hillman in the back. And they have been flawless. Jeannie. 1148 of Jimmy Johnson, where Jimmy was saying, look, this car was just thinking about getting tight. So just a small change, please. Air pressure adjustment to that left rear seat. Carl Edwards still just a little bit free. He'll make a track bar adjustment and add a piece of vertical tape to the grill. That's from the bottom of your screen, Mark Martin. No changes this stop for the 16th. He hit Piero in fourth position. A drag race off between. Oh, close call with Casey Kane getting out. They made a track bar adjustment on the nine. The car was tight, but it was getting better. He could go back up to the high line. Look at the race off pit road. Look at Jeff Burton, the 31 group, gained four positions. And then you look at Carl Edwards in the 99. Those guys lost four positions. A good stop for that 31 team. And there you see the top times, including the pit stop on pit road. Jeff Burton's team backs it up with Casey Kane as well. Mark Martin and Carl Edwards, you see why they lost positions. They were slow on their time spent on pit road. Sixth caution of the day. We stand with 91 laps to go and still 18 cars in contention on the lead lap. I'm
back to Atlanta Motor Speedway, the Golden Corral 500, just 89 laps to go. Greg Biffle still leading Jimmy Johnson. Time for a visa race break from the Hollywood Hotel. Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers keeping an eye on things and what should be an interesting finish. We just saw in those recent round of pit stops as we're under caution how Jeff Burton took advantage and how it hurt Carl Edwards. We're taking a look right now down pit road. You see the guys starting to come out of the, their pit box. At the top of the screen right there, you'll see the 16 on the outside lane. Now coming out is Jimmy Johnson, and they start down through there. He's actually leading uh, Biffle down through there, but he realizes, man, I don't want to get caught speeding. So he slows down just a little bit. Greg speeds up just a little bit. They're about neck and neck as they get toward the end of pit road, and Greg says, well, I'm just going to try to take advantage of it. All of a sudden, you see Casey Kane come out, but he actually beats Jimmy Johnson off of pit road. Gets a lead back by that run play right there. He took a chance and got by with it, and we go back to green. A visa race break. Now back to green. Biffle Johnson, Jeff Burton, after that great stop by the Childress team, the new third-place car there in orange. Casey Kane, Mark Martin, Scott Riggs. Carl Edwards is seventh with Dave Blaney, Brian Vickers, and Jamie McMurray. Kyle Busch got the free pass as we battle for the Don't. lead again. Yeah, I tell you, though, this makes me nervous. Uh, I'm telling you, when you run underneath somebody like that, it just really is hard to keep your car from getting into that guy on the outside. I mean, they are neck and neck again after lap one of a restart. Seven one thousandths of a second separated with Biffle, I believe, other places on the racetrack. Now, Dale Jarrett in the 88 car, the UPS car, he's in 26, two laps down. The battle is back there between Ryan Newman in the 12, Sterling Marlin in the 40, trying to get that free pass, being the first car lap down. Pretty cool. Now they're going to change roles. Biffle to the inside, Johnson to the outside. And the hunter becomes the hunted. Oh, crossover. Jimmy looking on the bottom again. Nothing there. I'll tell you who's starting to really hunt right now is that nine car, Casey Kane, in third position. He's hunting the high side of the racetrack, but he has those three lap cars are riding with him here in between him and those top two. Well, it's good to see him up there running well today because they have really manned at Daytona and Montana, they have had some tough goes of it in uh, Las Vegas. And guys, we are 240 laps into this race. Casey Kane and Jeff Burton just ran their fastest laps of the race. Can you say cooler temperatures? And time to go. You know, this, this race is physically demanding, too. I mean, this joint is fast. You get a lot of G's in a turn here, and you're in the turns a long, long time. Talking about cooler temperatures, we've been following this all day long. Remember, we started this race roughly about three hours ago. It, the, the sun was out. It's been very cool and very overcast since then. You see right there, not much difference in the air temperature, but just look at the difference, especially in turn one and two. That just changes the handle of the car, but really picks those speeds up. More gripping than racetrack. Jimmy Johnson, just about six car lengths behind Greg Biffle. Here's Jeannie. Well, you gentlemen are talking about cooler temperatures, and that has to do with the weather, but the race is heating up, and you can really start to feel the tension here in the in the pits. Chad Canals coming on the radio telling his driver, look, just relax. We only need to lead one more lap. That would be lap 325. Yeah, but you know what, Jeannie? I think what uh, Jimmy Johnson is seeing, the same thing I'm seeing. That 16 is on the, he's moving away from a Johnson right now and those adjustments they made this time seem to really help him talk about a turnaround the Childress team has come in here and run extremely well two of their three cars on the lead lap with Jeff Burton presently in uh, fourth place here's Dick yeah, the neat thing about that Mike is he started in 38th position Car has a new body it had never been raced they tried it a couple of times tested it here and there but today is the first time it has seen competition Burton doing a great job at his pit crew wow they have picked up 20 spots on pit road looking at pit stop after pit stop they did it at Vegas picked up 18 there picked up 16 in California Burton right now running in fourth position I bet he can't wait for the next round of pit stop so he can get a couple more spots and his teammate Dave Blaney is also in the top 10 well, like I always say, I can make up a few hundreds on the racetrack. You can make up seconds in the pits. And I think they have made big gains under the hood of these race cars, too. And the indication of that was when Bobby Hamilton Jr. sat on the outside pole Friday night. They used Richard Children's engines. 
There's Dave Blaney tracking down Mark Martin. This is sixth and seventh, make it fifth when you add in the ten of Scott Riggs for sixth, seventh, and eighth. You know, the children's team that has been carrying the banner for most of the season already has been Kevin Harvick. So strong at Fontana, very strong at Las Vegas last week, but he's been somewhat struggling. We're riding with him here. He's one lap down back in 25th position. A little bit of a struggle for this race team today, but remember, they are working without their crew chief, Todd Barrier. Yeah, you know, I question that, Larry. I mean, why? The, the, I would wait for NASCAR to impose a penalty. I don't know if NASCAR is going to take that into consideration or not when they hand out the penalty this week. Uh, under appeal, we did talk with Richard Childress this weekend about that, and he told Fox that they felt that the suspension would not be lifted entirely. They hoped to reduce it, and they thought that since they tested here, this would be a good race to miss if you had to miss one. This battle here, it's been going on. You see Scott Riggs in the 10 looked like he wiggled quite a Come bit. Had, was going to lose a lot of ground to Dave Blaney in the 07. These guys are battling for seventh position. Remember our pole sitter, Ryan Newman, in the 12 is one lap down right now, back in 18th position. Joe Nemechek has recovered nicely from uh, that pit road speeding penalty. He's up for ninth in the 01. Yeah, he's had two penalties on the last two pit stops, one for hitting the commit cone and then for speeding on pit road the last time. So nice recovery. Riding with Michael Waltrip, looking at Jamie McMurray. Uh, they are 11th and 12th. Behind them, Elliot Sadler in 13th. I think Michael in the 15 crowd must have made some pretty major adjustments on their last pit stop. So he came in running in the fifth or sixth spot, went out running in the, like the 12th or 13th spot, but he seems like the car is coming back to the front for him. Nemechek battling his teammate, Scott Riggs, in the 10. This is at eighth place. But those owners at MBV, MB2, they have to be so proud because five races into this season, these two teams, they've been strong on qualifying day. They've been strong on race day. I mean, it, it, it's just great. To, I'm sure it's a great feeling as Riggs got real loose again, as he did about two laps ago, down in three and four. But to see two race cars, remember, they have that Hendrick power. So strong, so consistent week in, week out. One thing I like about working with the Hendrick group is they share every, they share information on everything. Engines, chassis, setups. Those guys can go and talk to Chad Canals or anybody on the Hendrick organization about setup and they'll help them with it. Robbie Gordon caught up in that uh, little bit of that lap one crash. He's fallen four laps down in 30th as Greg Biffle will put lap 252 on the board and leave us with 73 to go in Atlanta. The Golden Corral 500 on Fox, presented by M3 Power from Gillette, is brought to you by UPS. We're going to race the truck. People love the truck. UPS, the official delivery company of NASCAR, delivers the chance to win four tickets to next year's Daytona 500. Go to foxsports.com, keyword UPS. Good luck to you from all of us at Fox. Under 70 laps to go, Greg Biffle leading the race, and he has also set his career high for most laps led in a race at 120 plus. Biffle has never had three straight top tens, and in his 16 car, he's hoping to do that, not to mention win his uh, third cup race in the last five tri scores. So Jimmy Johnson there trying to keep up with him. 67 laps to go. 67 laps to go. Chris, a couple things that jumped out at me. At last caution, guys came down pit road, made adjustments to their cars. We see Jimmy Johnson continue to try to chase after Greg Biffle. But all of these guys, Casey Kane, Jeff Burke, as well as his teammate Dave Blaney, all had their fastest lap after that last restart. So they made the right adjustments right now, and they got themselves in pretty good position. I think they're going to make one more pit stop. So it'll be interesting to see what these teams can do. We've been talking about the 31 car and how great a pit stop, good pit stops they've been having. So it could kind of play into the factor they could get closer to the front. 
And these pit crews are going to have to make sure they don't make any mistakes on that final pit stop. Blaney in the 07 uh, and in the 31 Jeff Burton uh, Childress cars. Roush Racing recently had one of their engine specialists hired away by Richard Childress. Yeah, one of their aerodynamic uh, engineers, uh, Nick Valila. And, uh, you know, you wonder whether or not he's already had an impact over there or not. So, but it's good to see Richard Childress racing and back up here battling in the top ten. All right, let's uh, get more on Jeff Burton with Dick Berger. Dick? Well, he was a lot better right after that round of pit stops. But uh, right now, Burton is suffering from a car that is way too loose. He is asked to tighten that automobile up a lot on the next round of pit stops. Yeah, you can see... Uh, He's got his hands full right there. He's really cranking that thing. I noticed uh, we've been in the car with him a time or two, and he really puts uh, a lot of effort into the steering. He really cranks that thing to the left. Watch him right here. I mean, he goes all the way down his left. He's using his, see how he's got his left or his right arm laying on the steering wheel? That's for support. Whoa, baby. She juked on him there. Jumped out from under him a little bit. I think Joe Nemechek might have loosened him up a little there, Darrell. I believe he did. He's talking about being loose. That made him a real loose. Yeah, he's lost about four positions in the last three laps. But, guys, we're to that final 100 miles. DW talked about it in the pre-race, early in the race. This is when those engine guys, they get a little bit nervous. These RPMs they've been going on now for over three and a half hours. A little, lot of RPMs late in the race now. The cooler temperatures help a little bit as far as the wear and tear on the engine, but uh, still 500 miles on this racetrack where you're in the throttle all the time. Biffle and Johnson have dominated this race. Greg has led 133 laps, Jimmy 117. But don't count out the young fellow in third. Casey Kane is six seconds back, and last year he finished third here in this race and fifth in the fall race. Matt's with his crew chief. Second best racetrack for Casey Kane on going back to a racetrack for a second time. Now, Tommy, you've got that car back in contention. What's Casey saying about it now? I was still a little off. We got to keep adjusting on it, but uh, this Dodge Charge is running pretty good. Best it's run all year. We just got to keep working on it. The big thing is confidence. The car's still a little tight on entry, but Casey said it really turns well from the center off. And I would have to say what else probably helped Tommy Ball and Casey Kane, this nine team, is whenever you go to a track and Goodyear takes a new tire there, they go there and they do a confirmation test. And Casey Kane and the nine, they were one of the ones that did that test back in January. You know who the other car was? Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car running second and third right now. Another guy that I've been watching and he's uh, he's coming back is uh, Carl Edwards. Restarted in about 10th place and he's back up to fourth. And uh, he has the fastest call on the racetrack right now by about a tenth and a half. Of the top 10 drivers entering this race in the next Hell Cup points, only one of them still has the same point position, Tony Stewart sixth. Here's how the top five came in. Bush Johnson Biffle, there's how things will change. There would be the new top five, the way they're running right now. Nine of the top ten positions would change, given the positions the drivers are in right now. I mean, we've been talking about it, talking about it. The fans may say, look, this is the only, you know, race race five. What's the big deal about that? But just remember, it's not a 36-race schedule. It's actually a 26-race schedule before they reset that chase for the cup. Some of those guys way down there, like a Bobby Labonte and others, they are in trouble. Greg Biffle and Jimmy Johnson both batting, uh, looking to battle uh, bat 600. Biffle looking for his third win in the last five races. Johnson is going for his sixth win in the last ten. We listened in on Jimmy Johnson's team. 31-20. Leaders running 30-90, Jimmy. Third and fourth are running 31 flat. You're doing everything you can, but we got to try to keep him in sight in case we have a green flag pit stop here at the end. So we can catch him. Just giving that driver information, letting him know how he stacks up against the competition out front, which would be Greg Biffle, as well as Casey Kane and Carl Edwards. But right now, we're about 20 laps away from that possible green flag stop that you heard Chad Canals telling Jimmy Johnson about. Could be that final opportunity for four tires and that final adjustment. Jeannie is in the pits of the low Chevy. Yes, and the man in charge of the catch count for the 48. Not in Las Vegas to taste victory. Someone much more important needed him. Mike Knauer's mother, Catherine, very ill. She is still in intensive care in our nation's capital. Knauer is here this week, but as you can see, mom is definitely on his mind. 
and his helmet. Thanks, Jean. A lot of races, but you only have one mom. There's Jimmy Johnson from our Quaker State aerial coverage. You'll see that he's 5.7 seconds behind Greg Biffle, and he is two seconds up on Casey Kane in front of a huge crowd here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. But you know what makes mom happy? Put a smile on her face. Her son does good. You got it. 55 laps to go in the Golden Corral 500. A good old-fashioned Ford Chevy shootout at the OK, I mean, at the, I mean, at the Golden Corral here. Greg Biffle and Jimmy Johnson going at it back and forth. Biffle has led 146 laps. Jimmy Johnson, 117. And a crowd estimated at over 100,000 here at Atlanta Motor Speedway on this first day of spring and Palm Sunday. And we already have some action on pit road. Joe Nemechek with a cylinder problem. Casey must have uh, possibly a broken bow spring or something. He's not running up to full speed. They're coming down to get four tires. This will be their last stop of the day. Maybe they're trying to short pit at the same time and try to make the best of a bad situation. Chris. We take a look at our leader, Greg Biffle, is still basically pulling away from the rest of the field. All right, tell me about hanging RPM. Well, we're talking about a sustained RPM. What that means is uh, they're pulling some tape off the front of Joe Nemechek's car. They must be running a little bit warm. But what it is, is you go around this racetrack, you you get at a certain RPM with a, you know, 8,000 RPM, and you kind of, it just stays there for a consistent period of time, and it's really hard on a valve train. You carry that sustained speed all the way around this racetrack, and that's what we're talking about. All right, so we have 48 laps to go. We have a blown engine right now on the back straightaway. We've got 45, car, and a caution flag is out, and that'll be good for some guys and bad for others. Kyle Petty with the uh, problem, and just was going to ask what kind of strategy at this point, because they won't have to stop again. No, that this will be their final stop, but this is what happens. At the end of this race, a lot of times, you'll start seeing engine problems because of that sustained RPM. It's worth pointing out that the leader of the most laps in this race has failed to win the last three times. And uh, Jimmy Johnson, as we said, Greg Biffle uh, leading the way. Let's rejoin Daryl, Larry, and Mike as Kyle Petty continues to have problems. And it's that time. Yes, it yep. is. In the, the last hundred miles. The last hundred miles of this race always gets a few of them. Joe Nemechek was running seventh at the time. He'd had to overcome a penalty and move back up through. Kyle Petty was running uh, back at about 30th position uh, when that happened to him. And just remember, Joe Nemechek runs Hendrick engines. He lost an engine at Fontana a couple of weeks ago when, when he was up there leading the race then. Now, Kyle Petty, we have Casey Kane running in the top five. Remember the Petty organization, they're running Everham engines. So a lot of organizations a little nervous right now. Here's Joe Nemechek going up in smoke, and here is Kyle Petty. It's too bad because Kyle was only like five points out of 15th place in the points, and that that's the highest a Petty car had been in the point standing since 1999 here with John Andretti at the wheel of the 43 car. Sterling Marlin will receive the free pass. First car one lap down, so that will give us 16 cars on the lead lap. Quite a bit of go back fluid. To green. Quite a bit of fluid, I think, from the Petty car. Uh, coming on the pit road uh, looks like a big streak of oil coming down and that's a blow Daryl because Kyle came in here 16th in the points he'd led laps in three races and uh, they were pretty solidly positioned in the standings yeah that's the oil we're talking about right there and that's what NASCAR is taking a look at right now and that's the reason they've left pit road closed Bobby Hamilton jr. back in the race after spending some time in the garage after slapping the wall in turn two but he's 78 laps down there's the uh, flag signaling that will go one more time before pit road is open. But this is when you walk around as that crew chief, you pat all these guys on the back and say, look, I know you've been solid all day long. Some of the crews, we've had some mistakes, but this pit stop right here with about 40 to 45 laps to go, this could be the make or break stop. And you know what, that driver, we do not need any speeding on pit road coming in or leaving. But you know something, Larry, you say that and you're exactly right. But one of the things I found is the more I emphasis I put on how important this pit stop would be, the more times I'd have a problem. Uh, you just got to let your team, if they've been solid all day, you just got to let them go do their thing. Because if you call attention to the fact, hey, boys, this is the one that counts. Maybe just to do your deal, you know what we need yeah, here. Yeah, just do your job. Don't make any mistakes, but be careful. Greg Biffle and Jimmy Johnson have led all but 12 laps today thus far. Next week, FX and Speed Channel coverage from Nashville Super Speedway. Bush Series qualifying, 11.30 a.m. Saturday, the ARCA Remax Series. 
And the Bush Series race presented by Wind Fuel. One big day of racing on Easter Saturday weekend on Speed And you may think, well, it's an off weekend for Nextel Cup, so the Bush guys are kind of be on their own over there. Not true. Rumor has it a lot of Nextel Cup drivers will be there racing next Saturday. Pit stops, Dick Bergeron. Well, Doug Richard, crew chief for Greg Biffle, had a pit board passed around so everybody could read what they wanted to do to this race car. Answer, nothing. They are going to go back out again with the same setup, same tires, same everything that has run so well for them all day long. Ginny. Well, it's been a pattern on the 48 car of Jimmy Johnson, just getting looser and looser throughout the day as they try to adjust. The car is, yes, loose into turns around a wedge in the left rear and a track bar adjustment. Steve. Ginny Carl Edwards said we really needed that caution. We've got really loose. They've made a track bar adjustment, wedge, and air pressure, Matt. Left side of your screen is a six is down and away. He's not going to beat the 48 off. No changes for Mark Martin. His car was two tenths a second a lap faster than the leader. Meanwhile, Casey King, his car was tight on entry, loose on exit. Tommy Baldwin tried to make some changes, chassis and also air pressure, to get this car the setup it needs to go to victory lane. They entered pit road in the third and fifth position. Look at there, we've been locked, talking about lead changes all day long. Look at there, they swapped it right there. You heard Matt Yoakum just talking about Casey Kane lost three positions, possibly on his final pit stop. Now let's look at the pit road times, which includes a pit stop. Jimmy Johnson, you see why they went to the top. Carl Edwards, his crew comes to life, but there you see it, Casey Kane and Michael Walter with the slowest times. But Larry, do you mind losing those three positions if you can come out with a better car? If you can make it better, you know what? Maybe we'll make it better. We'll, we'll have a shot at beating these guys right here have been leading this race all day long. These fellas did good. Jimmy Johnson out first. Jimmy Johnson, an excellent pit stop moments ago. Yeah, great job by these guys on the 48 crew. A 13.5 best all day. You see, they're really pumped up. Matt Clark, the pit crew coach, I mean, he was really pumping everybody up right there. Chris Ed, I mean, uh, Carl Edwards right there, they come in, all our guys, they were pumped up also. They had a good pit stop, got him back out. He's fourth quick enough, quick. But here's the guys that we thought as they came in as leaders, Greg Bimple's crew went to work. Everything was good on the right side. It looked like they were going to have another really super fantastic stop. This is what he needed to retain the lead. If you look on the left front, they get the car up. He didn't have all the nuts off, had to reach back down, grab his air wrench, and you'll notice he's the last one to get done. That was the difference. That was a 15.7 stop, and that was the difference between being first or second. And we're taking it back to the streets, Mike. They're going green. 285 laps in the book, 40 to go as Jimmy Johnson leads Greg Biffle off into one. Got to be able to close the deal, and that's everybody, driver and crew. Mark Martin up for third. Carl Edwards, Dave Blaney. An impressive fifth. Scott Riggs, Brian Vickers, Jeff Burton, Casey Kane, Elliott Sadler. That's your top ten. Boys, with 40 laps to go, as we say, business fixing the pickup here. Oh, yeah, I don't know if you can feel it at home or not, but the intensity just, I mean, the, the electricity just starts running through the air these last few laps of a race. During that caution, Joe Nemechek's car was pushed to the garage, and Ricky Rudd returned to the racetrack 25 laps down. Biffle in the 16 got a real good run on the high side off turn two that time down the back stretch. Let's see if he can close the deal going through three and four. But Johnson's so strong through the middle of the course. I just don't know. I think if, it, if whatever Jimmy Johnson's got, Greg Biffle's going to find out right now. And just remember, before this caution, Biffle had about a two-second lead. Now Biffle takes it to the low side, but look at this mess right here. This is Jeff Burton in the 31, all the way back through Tony Stewart. So that's a basically about 9th through 15th with a bunch of cars. It's a lap down. Dave Blaney, 07, last top 10 finish, Pocono, July 2003. So he's on the mark today. And he can smell it. He can smell a good finish. You can just see it. You know, it's like he can reach out there and touch it now as he pulls right up to the back of Mark Martin, the six car for four. The car's working really well. He can run it in hard. If it goes up the hill, it's okay. He's back to the throttle fast. Atlanta seems to produce these rubber band races. Somebody will check out. The field will string out. But isn't it funny how by the end it all jumbles back together again? When Kevin Harvick won here in 01, there were five cars fighting for the win. Well, these two guys in front, the 48 and the 16 now, Mike, they have been kind of in the league of their own today. Everybody's gotten to them, but nobody can do anything with them. We've seen a lot of impressive comebacks today, including that of Brian Vickers. Knocked 
dropped out of the race early last week in Vegas in a lap 12 crash with Dale Jr. He came in here and got tapped on the very first lap in the backstretch. He and Bobby Hamilton Jr. got together, and he is now back up for seventh place. Jeannie? Yeah, Mike, he has to be in the running for maybe most cars pass today. Back to the front, back to the front. As you said, his day started making contact with a 32. He had to come in for minor repairs. Claude his way back up, had a bit of a penalty. Claude his way back up. At his worst, he was down to 28th and, of course, off that lead lap. But it's really just been like clockwork. Steady as she goes. Great pit stops. Very efficient. And just minor adjustments at the, as the car has been loose throughout the day. But as we stand right now, he's very happy with the car and obviously a very happy sitting seven. I don't know what it is about that 25 car. I've, I've noticed this before, but whoever drives it, whoever's working on it, that car always performs at Atlanta, whether it was Jerry Nadeau, Joe Nemechek, Kenny Schrader, whomever's driving that car always seems to run good at Atlanta. What really got this car behind is we see a big old race with Elliott Sadler in the 38 back to about Jamie McMurray in the 42. This is a battle for ninth and 12th. But back to Brian Vickers, he had that vibration, had to make that unscheduled pit stop, got a lap down when Bobby Hamilton Jr. had his problem. He got the free pass back on the lead lap. Cool weather, fresh tires. Over the last three laps, the first seven drivers in this race have just run their personal best lap of the race. As we said, business picking up. That's what you want. It's kind of like running a marathon. Got any kick? Better use it. Now's the time. 33 to go. See Jamie McMurray in the 42 oh, car. Yeah. Another car that was a lap down. Got back on the lead lap with the free pass. And now he's up there battling Jeff Burton in the 31 for 11th spot, trying to get to the top 10. Burton's been going backwards, Larry, ever since the restart. His car, I don't know what they did to it, but they uh, definitely went the wrong way. It's almost like they didn't keep up with the racetrack in the right way with the changes it was going through. One fellow who did, Scott Riggs, as he puts his Valvoline Chevy past Mark Martin. That will move Riggs up to fourth. And he looks really good. He's uh, got a good good little run going here. And as Larry said earlier, nice redemption for a fellow who missed the show here last uh, last fall. Right behind him, Mark Martin. Matt? No changes the last two stops for Mark Martin. Pat Trison said it on Saturday, or actually Friday. He said, you know, we need to have long runs. That's exactly what Mark Martin needs on this final run. A long oh, trouble. Turn run. one, guys. Somebody blowing yep. up. He's not going to get it, Matt. It's Robbie, Robbie Gore. I think it's a seven car. Robbie Gordon. That would be the third race in a row that he has had engine troubles. Snake eyes. Snake bit. But I would be willing to bet, Darrell, we talked about it at the beginning of the show. These guys they only have about 10 or 12 laps on those tires. What do you think we're going to do? Four tires. I better be coming yes, to Pit Road. You better believe We've it. seen what happened time and time again. If you don't, we'll be unto you. Now, with that said, if everybody would stay out, I might be all right with that. But they're not. Everybody's going to stay out. And uh, guess who's moving right up to his grade point average for Atlanta? Ryan Newman. He's going to get a free pass, get back on the lead lap, and into the top 17. His average finish here is 14th. Robbie Gordon is still trying to finish his first race of the year. And that's all he was trying to do here. This was going to be a science project to see if we can make 500 miles with an engine. But uh, obviously he came up short again. And there you see Chad Knauss making the decision. OK, what are we going to do here, boys? We're going to have about 25 laps to go. We've seen we all weekend long in the truck race and the bush race. Yeah, keep the wheel straight. He's coming to pit road. On that pit stop. Exactly. Help those tire changers all you can. His teammate Jeff Gordon has gone to the garage. Out of the race. Only one more position he could possibly pick up. But they've retired the 24. Dick, everybody's in. Now, crew chief Doug Richard told his driver Greg Biffle to come if the 48 came. Biffle decided four tires. They had discussed two, but it was Biffle's decision to take four. To Jeannie. Well, you better believe the 48 was coming in. I mentioned it earlier that Jimmy Johnson ran the Bush race, and he learned tires are so important here. Coming in for four new ones. Just a tick tight off, Steve. Kyle Edwards just a little free in the center. They added some fight into the right rear. Four tires for Carl Edwards. Matt. Scott Riggs, career best finish for the Daytona, running in the top five. No changes for the 10 car. No changes for the six of Mark Martins. It's a big race off. It's not going to be won by Jimmy Johnson this time. I'll say it's a race, but how about Carl Edwards in that 99 car? It looks like that group is the one that's going to really prevail. Going all the way to lead the group off pit road, as you notice right there, Jimmy Johnson in the 48 lost the position, but the real runner on pit road, 
Brian Vickers' crew in that 25. Great, thought, guys. Great, Great positions thought. gain when it really counts. I watched the 48 car, Larry, and he rolled into his pit box way too slow. I mean, look at these speeds right here by Brian Vickers. I don't think we've hardly seen anyone as well as Michael Waltrip in the 39-second bracket for four tires. Time spent look on at, pit Look road. at the 48, though, Larry. I was watching him, and he just creeped into his pit box. Didn't get that surge like they normally do. Here's the race off pit road. And it was a race. Johnson got out of his pit and in front of Greg Biffle, who yielded position, and then the scramble right there. But Carl Edwards, yesterday's winner and NASCAR's, I think, newest big star, finds himself in front. I'm going to get me one of those business cards. I know that. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm going to go print up a bunch. You mean the one you threw away a couple years ago? <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Schrader told me to. 28 laps to go at Atlanta Motor Speedway. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Restart. Carl Edwards a little slow on the gas. The field stacked up a little bit, but stayed in line. Yeah, it's really easy here late in the race. You're excited. You want to get going. Easy to spin the tires, and uh, when you do, Closes everybody right up on your back bumper. Look at the run. Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car got off turn two. He knows he better get real in Carl Edwards in a hurry trying to get this lead back. It's go time for Johnson, and he completes the pass for the 26th lead change of the day. I think Jimmy Johnson is one of those kind of drivers. You just don't know how good he is until it counts. See Greg Biffle, though, Carl Edwards' his teammate in the 16 car, pulling up in there, as well as Brian Vickers in that 25 car. Most of his position's gain has been on pit road. We've been talking about it all year long. Ralph versus Hendrick right there in the top five. Two, Hendrick Chevrolets. Three, Roush Fords. Then it's the Childress Chevy of Dave Blaney and the Everham Dodge of Casey Kane. Michael Waltrip up into the top ten along with Riggs and McMurray. Michael's had a really good day. Uh, been up in top 10 just about all day long. That's good to, good turnaround for that bunch. Let's hear what Carl Edwards and crew had to say about this, what could be final run. Don't spin your tires on the restart, man. If you do, don't worry about it. Coming inside, big picture still. Just don't worry about it. It's his spotter, Bobby Hudson, up there being that cheerleader that he needs to be for that young man. So, see, they've got the driver. They know that. They just got to keep him tempered back a little bit because it's big picture championship. He's in the championship hunt right now, and they want him to stay there. Now that's the Bobby Hudson I remember. He's got 30 years in this sport as a mechanic and as a crew chief and up on the roof. So a lot of experience helping the rookie, Carl Edwards. And, and Mike, you talked about it a while ago after the last restart. Right then, our top four just ran their fastest lap to this race, 29.50. That's down there where a lot of these guys qualified for the race on Friday. Michael Walter battling with a couple of lap cars, uh, including Mike Bliss, who right now is the first car one lap down in 18th in the zero. And I know we have a lot of racing going all over the racetrack, but this team, they was very solid, but they're racing with heavy hearts because Dave Scope, one time car chief for this team, he had moved to quality control manager. His wife, Angie, finally lost her battle with cancer yesterday. Angie, Ricky Rudd's personal assistant, as well as Richard Broom's daughter. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the Scope and the Broom family. Michael almost, he slid right up in front of the 42. That was close. Elliot Sadler, though, in that 38 car, he's been lurking back there trying to get back to the top 10. The yellow car, he's back in 11th position, pulls right up on the back bumper of Jamie McMurray's 42 car. That 38 car would be a car that would drive me crazy because one minute it's running up front and running great, and the next minute it's going back through the field like something's broken on it. Right behind that zero car is another car having a pretty decent run moved into the top 20. Scott Wimmer in that Caterpillar 22 car. He's back running 19th, battling Mike Bliss in the zero. Twenty laps to go in Atlanta. And what had been a strung out battle but for the front spot with Jimmy Johnson and Greg Biffle has now become a dogfight. Oh, yeah, this is when the crew chief and the spotter saying, don't let them get away. You're racing this guy. You're racing that guy. No more give. All take. We're into the countdown laps now. 19 to go. Jimmy Johnson holding Carl Edwards by four tenths of a second. 
the Golden Corral 500 on Fox is presented by new M3 Power Nitro from Gillette. Feel the power of the world's best day. And brought to you by Home Depot, NASCAR's home improvement warehouse. By Sunoco, official fuel of NASCAR. Without Sunoco, there'd be no race day. And by Chevy, the defending manufacturer's champion. The revolution races on. Jimmy Johnson trying to win back-to-back -back Atlanta races for the first time since Jeff Gordon did it in the late 90s. Held off Greg Biffle, now trying to hold off Carl Edwards. How about that Roush team versus the Hendrick team when they're bunched up near the top, Jeff Hammond? Well, you think about teamwork, but I don't think you're going to have much help today because it's pretty much every man for himself. This racetrack, the way it is, has a lot to do with how your car works, whether working on the bottom or working on the top. And right now, Jimmy Johnson is just doing all he can to stay out in front of uh, Carl Edwards. I mean, it's going to be one whale of a finish. And the other thing interesting is, can Chevrolet control this racetrack for one more race? I mean, they're two fours behind him, and they're putting a lot of pressure on him right now. Jimmy's staying with a good thing. The same chassis on this car that he won with at Atlanta last fall and that he won at Lowe's Motor Speedway with last year in both races. Mike? 16 laps to go, Chris, and these three are driving off into a different zip code. Brian Vickers is three seconds back. Mark Martin, three and a half. Dave Blaney has moved into sixth, five and a half seconds off the lead. Ahead of Casey Kane and Michael Waltrip and Scott Riggs and McMurray who continue to battle. I'll tell you what we saw with Carl Edwards yesterday in a very similar situation and got a late caution. He made a huge move past four cars at once to end up winning that race. So I know he's hoping maybe he gets one more shot at him here on a reset. No driver has ever won the Atlanta Bush race and cup race in the same weekend. Yet. In, in, in the irony, this was two of the best cars in the Bush race yesterday. And here's Elliot Sadler finally making a move in the 38 car on Jamie McMurray in the 42 car. This is that battle for 10th position. Well, you have to just, you have to give it to Jimmy Johnson and Chad Canal. Week in and week out. They're not just finishing races. They are winning every week. And just remember, on Tuesday, we will get the verdict whether Chad Canals will be able to be with this race team for the next two races, which is two short tracks, Bristol and Martinsville. All right, their car winning last week, but the uh, height found to be out of adjustment by about an eighth of an inch beyond tolerance, uh, out of spec. And that appeal will be here Tuesday, and of course, we'll fill you in next weekend. Well, you know what I do? I take every car after a race and run it through there and get a height, a measurement. On every one of them, I take an average. And if you were within the average, you're okay. Tell you what, Carl. Every car, not just five. In the 99, he keeps looking to the low side, but the Johnson in the 48, he just gets that good run, keeps that momentum up off the corner. And they have left Greg Biffle. Biffle is now 1.4 seconds back as Mark Martin takes fourth place from the Bush past Bush champion, Brian Vickers. You know, I just, I worried about Biffle. They just didn't seem to be making enough changes on his car to, to really keep up with the change in track conditions. They were very content to leave the car alone. I know that's not a bad thing, but uh, I think that gets you behind maybe at the end of the day. And this is a battle right here for the 16th position. Tony Stewart in the 20 in the orange car, Sterling Marlin in the 40. Remember, Sterling got the free pass not that many laps ago. Everybody's racing side by side because they know there's only 12 laps to go. See the guy that's really, really just hanging tough, Carl Edwards in that 99 car. Boys, he is just right there. And he's closing, Darrell. And it's just like yesterday when Jimmy Johnson sat there and watched him, hoping he'd make a mistake. The roles are reversed today. Carl's mom looking on, Nancy. She has been his biggest fan through his young racing career. Like all moms and dads, made huge sacrifices to get that kid here financially. Did everything they hawked the farm to get him here. But you know what, guys? I think about this 99 team. Go back a year ago. They didn't know whether how long they were going to be racing. Without a sponsor, there was dissension between the race team. They didn't know what was going to happen. And here they are, boys. He got loose off turn two. He's digging in the barrel all he can dig right now. The reason he got loose off of turn two is because he came off of there. I mean, he closed the gap on Jimmy Johnson a lot off of just turn two that time. Gathered it back up, Daryl, and he did not lose a lot of ground. Let's see that again. 
He's up high here, and there's that black streak over there that you, right there that you hit occasionally, and it'll step that back in out, and buddy, at 185 miles an hour, that'll get your attention. But you're right, Mike, he did not lose that many positions, but you see it right here up on the high side in the throttle, knows if he backs out, he's gonna lose a lot of position. But what happens on these tires this year, a slide job like that could take you right out of the hunt. So he's gonna have to sit and cool his tires, Daryl, but Will it give him another shot? And now you see Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy's looking around trying to find a little bit different place to run. And yeah, he'll have to cool his jets for a lap or two. Here's Steve. Hey, Mike, Darrell, that's exactly what Carl Edwards just said. He said, I'm gonna build up a little more momentum, make another run and give it everything I've got. Steve, meanwhile, his teammate Greg Biffle in the 16 car, he's drawing him back in up there in the third position. I think Carl is overdriving his car a little bit right at this point. Just looking at him coming off a of turn two. I know that doesn't seem possible, but I think that's what's happening. Smoke and trouble for Bobby Labonte. He slows on the back straightaway. He was involved in that lap one crash, has soldiered around and made laps. He's 52 off the pace and uh, now drops down to the apron. And but Jimmy no Johnson's caution. car is doing what, it, uh, there's Bobby right there headed to the pits, but Jimmy Johnson's car is doing what it does week in and week out. Gets better at the end of the runs. See Jack Roush talking up there. That's Bob Osborne. He's putting his hand around saying, look guys, no matter what the outcome, you guys are doing great. Carl Edwards is doing great. The pit crew is doing great. But meanwhile, we talked about it a second ago as they come back around for five to go. Greg Biffle, his teammate, the 16, reeling him in for second place. Oh, oh Edwards, good. another slide there, and, and Biffle's going to be on him. Yeah, I think that uh, Carl used his stuff up. That sliding around, is that these tires just will not take that. Edwards' first Atlanta Cup race was here last, or his first Atlanta race last October. He started fourth, finished third, led 15 laps. Having a good or better day right now. Now he's got his hands full with his yep. teammate. The smart thing for Carl to do, don't wreck the car, let Biffle go. But you know, it looks like the whole 99 team is, is supporting one another. You hear Bobby Hudson supporting Carl Edwards. You Come on, see supporting Carl and then you've seen Jack Roush over there supporting Bob Osborne telling him good job and you heard Doug tell tell Greg the 99 is asking for mercy leave me alone you can't do it you still got the leader in sight how can you let him go Daryl leave me alone well <laughs> depends on what you got left I guess you got three laps left is what you got Carl is come to the line try to go high now and I like that idea if your tires are giving up Find you another place to run, and high would be good. I think as loose as that car is, that's the only place he can probably run it right now. And you can see they put a little distance. Man, and he scraped the wall going down into turn one that time. He just got the tail right against it going down into one. But he was the fastest of all drivers on that lap. That's a battle for fifth right there. Casey Kane in the nine on the high side. We've seen him there all day long, as well as Brian Vickers in the 25. See what I like about a guy like Carl Edwards? What you don't know, you don't know. And he don't know that he needs to be taking it easy right now. He just closed up a bunch off of turn two, or four. He moved up the racetrack and it is really helping him. I mean, he is closing fast now. He's got that high line. He's cutting that gap down, boys. And he's pulling away from Greg Biffle, but he better hurry, Darrell. Lap and a half to go, halfway down the back straight. He's coming. Four tenths of a second last lap, three tenths of a second, comes. two He's, laps ago, and this is gonna be another one of those Atlantas. I'm telling you, they're gonna be side by side when they come to the line next time by. Here they go, white flag, boys, last time. He's there. And he cut the margin in less than half. Hey, boys, watch this. Jimmy goes up high to block him. That may or may not be good. If he can get that run right here, if he can get it, keep that momentum. He's gonna get a run at him. He'll get one shot at turn three and four. I'm telling you, they're gonna be side by side when they come to the line. It's gonna be another one of those fantastic Atlanta finishes. Johnson tries to block him. It's who can stay in the throttle here off turn four. And here they come, and I think Cole's got the advantage on him. He got it. He got it. He got it. Cole Ruddy has won it. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Two one hundredths of a second after five. is the man. Yesterday, we called him NASCAR's newest star. Today, he confirmed it. Look at mom. 
Look at the tire splinters all rubbed off of them. Bring her on in here. And hey, hey, we got a backflip. You're going to do a backflip. He'll probably do a double backflip today. I guarantee you, Daryl, five laps to go. He was sideways wrecking off turn two. He was smart. He found him another line. He was, he was all over the place. He moved high, and here he came, buddy. Oh, yeah. Bring her on down here, Carl. enthusiasm by this 25 year old from Missouri that's the show me state he's about to show all of us new record one yesterday one today nobody knows that he's gonna have a lot of help for this backflip I think come on bud get up on the roof and oh, yeah, that may not be a good idea but and these fans love it look at Carl watch this here he goes come on come on <laughs> Look at Jack. He's up in there. Jack's trying to get up in there and get him some of this. Watch this. All right. That Jack might do a backflip. You never know. And you know what? Jack Rouse oh, about Carl. a year ago said, I'm telling you, Carl Edwards, he's the real deal. Oh, man. What a thrill. What a thrill. Now for the second day in a row, Carl gets to drive to victory lane. Go, baby, go! <laughs> Come on. Yesterday, in the Bush Series race, he made this thread the needle move in the yellow and black number 60 to get out in front of Jimmy Johnson and then Casey Kane to score his first Bush Series win. Two days, two wins, two biggest days of his life. You know what, guys? Today, here's the run for the checkered flag. Final lap. He's there, baby. Here he comes. He's got the momentum. Jimmy, I tell you, Jimmy moved up trying to block Carl. I actually think it hurt him. I think Jimmy to run the bottom like he had been all day. He may have been a lot better off, but he moved up trying to block Carl, and I think it really hurt him. When they got together, Daryl, you see Jimmy's car slew a little bit and lose its momentum. Yeah, Jimmy right there was trying to get up in front of Carl, but he couldn't quite make it, and I think it really took the momentum away from him. Gave Carl that good run off the high side. You've got so much more speed when you're out there like that, and here you come, closing the gap and taking the lead. How many finishes like this have we had at this place? I mean, look at the truck race, and even yesterday's race was close. And Harvick and, uh, and Dill and Jeff Gordon, and it just goes on and on. Tracks a big rubber band. Things stretch out, things come right back together. And NASCAR's happiest young star gets to do his signature move. Well, he said yesterday that was the biggest win of his career. I'd say it yeah. stepped up a notch. A his, big his, notch, Larry. His career is moving fast. <laughs> <laughs> Jeannie's in victory lane. Oh, guys, Carl Edwards told me yesterday he had actually never done a backflip of a car twice in one weekend. I, yesterday was the best day of your life. So what's today? Man, I don't even know. Um, all right, I have a couple people to thank. First of all, Scott, <laughs> thank you. First day of spring. We'll just pan paper. the fire suit. We'll go ahead. Oh, Office Depot, AAA World Financial Group, Charter. I got to thank Carl Jockey, um, Howard Hall. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm really, uh, I had a lot of people okay. to help me. Thank you, all of you folks back home. Um, Cedar Ridge RVs. Uh, I, I can't, I can't. Uh, I'm You're sorry. speechless. Yeah. I, I completely understand that. You told me yesterday that you had been riding dirt bikes and it made you more brave. I, I don't think it gets more brave than this finish we just saw. Let me, um, let me tell you, Jimmy Johnson is an amazing competitor and uh, I'm telling you, I've never driven that hard in my life. Though I was uh, following him and I was thought, man, we might finish second, but even if we do, um, that's the hardest I've ever driven in my life and I was pretty proud of that. So uh, congratulations. No kidding, the, the car was sideways a couple of times and you saved it and still won. I was just... Uh, Bobby Hudson. <laughs> We're just on a mission. We're here to win races. I can't believe we won two this weekend. 
Thank you, everybody, for giving me opportunities. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I am. I don't think you need the business card anymore. Go celebrate. By the way, guys, Jack Roush, not here yesterday. He had a prior commitment, had to leave with five laps to go. He is here today. Steve Burns, you better hold on to that old business card. It's going to be worth something. Look at this in the run to the flag. Carl Edwards, the rookie, gets his first ever win in dramatic fashion. And now, as fans of all three of NASCAR Premier Divisions know, nobody celebrates a win like this young man. I wish I could do that.